Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Brass Beat uh, Podcast. Today, we have with us uh, <coughs> a, a, a superstar <laughs> within the trombone world. Uh, he's principal trombone in Seattle uh, Symphony Orchestra. Uh, he's also faculty member, just correct me if I'm wrong, in the Washington School of Music. He oh, was also a member of the Metropolitan Opera, member of the Brass Quintet Center, Brass Quintet. Apart from many other things, like he, I, I was, I was reading your resume, and I was just getting very scared and depressed at the same time. So please, um, before we start, I want to say something. Now is the moment that you can share this link with your friends, uh, with your brass friends. Maybe even if you have a viola friend, you can share it with them so they learn from. Koichiro Yamamoto, uh, <laughs> how is everything going? How, how is everything? Well, it's going well. Thank you for having me. Well, like, you know, it's a lot of hectic because you know I miscalculated like a time difference between the Seattle where I am right mm -hmm. now and Spain. So I saw like the eight hours, but like I said, one hour ago, oh shoot! You know? <laughs> uh, oh, I took shit for you today, so my hair no. is still wet. <laughs> no, 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 your hair looks great. I have to share with the audience that we. We have been lately talking. Um, most of our conversation was about TV shows. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's why I asked you. I asked them. I totally forgot until now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, that's, that's what, what's the name of the TV show? I sent you a picture of you know, Netflix in uh, in the Spanish. Yeah, Far Farina. I think you were watching Farina. It's a uh, yeah. Nemo, Nemo, and Marco, and Nemo. How, what's the title of that TV show in English? It's like an unauthorized, uh, unauthorized lives or something like that. Okay. Yeah, Nemo and uh, like a Galicia, you know, like based on the Galicia, like a shipping company, you know, they're so smuggling, uh, you know. Yep. That, uh, <laughs> oh my God, like I, man. So yeah. I, I think that's for the three seasons or two or three seasons. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I think two or three seasons. I watched the entire time. So I lost a lot of sleep so because yeah. of the people. Yeah, because, because of your fault, yeah. Yeah, yeah of, of course. Always is my fault. Always is the is the composer's fault. No, yeah, but I have to say I'm watching also old sarks. I mean the last season. Oh, uh, man, that's intense. Getting more intense. Getting mm -hmm. more intense. So yeah. No I, spoilers. I, no spoilers, please. Yeah, it's really it's really bad habit I have. You know because you know I have an iPod. I have like a big screen, like a computer, like in my office. You know, this is my you know living uh, our living room. Mm -hmm. But I practice downstairs, you know, somehow like my neighbor has, you know, hearing problems, so uh, they don't care. Like I can practice, you know, I can practice trombone like 24 hours a day. So I watch, oh my God, like I watch like a Netflix and playing practice. It's just, you know, that's the only way I could, I was able to survive during the mm -hmm. pandemic. Yeah. And do you, do you practice while watching TV shows? <laughs> maybe because this is not me maybe that's a not common thing to do but i do it i do it and i have to confess that i do it as well sometimes so yeah i really have to because you know i guess yeah i'm sure like you know you have you know i watch a little bit uh the who was talking to uh i think of van van dyke because you know since you you know invited me like this you know like a wonderful like an interview session like the van van dyke's you know like a, i i didn't i didn't have a time to you know watch the whole thing also the principal trombone for like a you know like a life fell like a david mm -hmm. yeah so i watched a uh, part of your interview uh mm -hmm. so I'm sure you guys talk about you know, how to practice, you know, how to motivate yourself, you know, this uh, uh, encouragement, uh, you know, like your lives, you know, lives as a student. You know what? Uh, I don't have to go over that because, you know, other masters, you know, other great trombone teachers and uh, mm -hmm. the artists have already talked about. It. But yeah, uh, this is such a bad habit. But I watch TV <laughs> when I practice. <laughs> no. I always, I hate doing that. But sometimes, you know, I really have to learn the music. For example, brass quintet or like a solo coming up. I don't like practicing. But you know, if I have to learn <laughs> music, for example, like an orchestra is playing a brand new like a world premiere, which happens very often lately. And yeah, like orchestra lives, you know, orchestra lives, uh, orchestra musicians' lives has never be, um, never be the same. 
uh, for like the last five years. We used mm. to play just a Tchaikovsky 4, 5, 6, mm. Meister Singer mm. Overture, that's it. But now mm. every week, you know, before the pandemic, you know, Overture, like, you know, oh, world premiere, you know, whatever, like a Grammy Award, a new composer. Oh my God, it's hard. Yeah, we, so with, it, with, a, with a new trombone solo every week. Yes. <laughs> oh, exactly. It's just like, you know, I have to spend the time just like, you know, figure out the rhythm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have to ask like a trumpet player, like, hey, man, dude, could you help me out? Like, what, what is the rhythm here? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, uh, I'm... Yeah, yeah, just something like that. But, you know, other than that, I, I have to say, I, sometimes I practice, you know, oftentimes I practice with, you know, my Netflix is on. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's funny because whenever I find a TV show that I like, for example, uh -huh. Ozarks, because I know there are periods where you are watching something, but you don't really like it. It's something that you're watching because you didn't find anything better. But for example, now, every time I go practice, it's kind of like I'm, I'm so excited because it means I'm, I'm going to play, but I'm also going to watch Ozarks. So, you know, it, it, it's not maybe the best advice we can give to young students, but sometimes see that it, it, it helps you to not be not over analyze everything maybe mm. i was gonna say that because um i also uh run an online school mm -hmm. uh since last summer actually like last september age like the first uh the launch you know launch the class was uh, october it's called like a t-ball school of japan mm -hmm. I just, you know, I just wanted to help, uh, help myself and help my students in Japan because I'm originally from the Tokyo, Japan, mm -hmm. uh, probably you can guess it very easily. Um, so I decided like, I got open and I launched like an uh, online based class. So you don't have to like, you know, you, you, you don't have to like pay the full tuition mm. for the 12 months or mm. 52 weeks, you know, just like an amount three base. For example, uh, yeah, I feel like I want to, I want to join, hang out, you know, like in mm. March sign up just on March of, uh, month of March and you can just monthly base you know basic class I usually have like a two guest artists I just finished last night mm -hmm. uh, so like a, you know usually I will do like a three uh, two hour class for example pick the topic you know how to practice both the capriccios you know etude mm -hmm. or like a back chore suite or like a you know how to warm up, buzzing, whole kinds of thing. Because I'm basically like I'm talking to the camera like a whole night, so which is fun. Because uh, without that, uh, reason why I'm still not ended up jail or uh, not being an alcoholic during the pandemic because of an online school because I had to mm. something to do every week. That's just great. Mm. So like we, as you know, like a US, so like had to you know hit really hard by COVID. You know, mm. like half a million people, 500,000 people died. You know, really? The big only 500,000? But, but only in, in Seattle, do you mean? No, 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 United States. And United States, you know, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, every single now, and it, that's it's really, really... Of course, like, you know, everybody has like, the same situation. You know, that's just so depressing because all of a sudden, just mm. life's changing, you know, like just to turn it upside down. Mm. So, uh, okay. of course, people talk about motivation during the pandemic. Yes, it's, I got that. But, uh, yeah, I had to find actually the motivation. Mm -hmm. I, I really had to, yeah. like, uh, you know, uh, you know, find the motivation. Yeah. You know, Koichiro, I, I was going to ask you, because later we're going to talk about a book that you wrote. The, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> is the, is the, what, the name of the book is Co Book, right? Co yeah, Book. Like Coherent, it's like you know, coherent is like you know, my like my name is spelled like a co, you know, K O I C H I R O. You know, yes. everybody call me K O in the United States because yes, know, <laughs> we're kind of lazy here. So like anyway, and also no. like I like it. You know, people call me Co. You know, um, no, no, but it's fun. I, I like I, it. I like it. I like it a lot. But uh, you know, even like that, I wanted to know how did you get the news about the lockdown at the beginning, especially as a member of the Seattle Symphony. How did you all react? Like, oh, that's what's uh, that's what's was so strange, because you know, like I have to say, if we have you know like a principal job, you know, any orchestras, any orchestras, you know, you get a phone call to, you know, get an invitation. For example, <laughs> you know, please come to the Korea, please come to Japan, like you know, Texas, or like you know, East you know, East Coast. 
Yeah, uh, I know. Like, as you know, they try to call. You know, I'm, I'm sure. Like, if they had more money, they would invite you or like a Joe Alessi or like somebody else. But you know, if like a low budget, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> if you have like a principal job, if you have like an orchestra job, even job, you get an invitation to the master class or like a recital, chamber music, mm -hmm. whatever. So I was one with them, and I really enjoyed traveling. So like uh, up to like uh, in uh, 2019, I don't know, I probably traveled 85,000 miles, which is, you know, I was able to, I was really close to the, the diamond, <laughs> so which is a lot of travel. So between orchestra job, because, you know, our orchestra is a full time job, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, we do concerts every, every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, management is willing to give me like a lot of freedom so that I can do like a more outside activity, not like a skiing or like a hiking, just like an outside activity, just a musical activity, you know, chamber music, or recital, masterclass, what, whatever. I was doing that 2019 and January, I was doing, like, still traveling back and forth, you know, playing an orchestra, you know, go to the airport, playing an orchestra, something like that. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the February, I think the beginning of March, I was supposed to go to Korea. So mm -hmm. the pandemic really started from the Asian country first, right? Just, mm -hmm. you know, they got panic, but we didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. We started hearing the news in February, and I was wondering, you know, in the, here in the United States, I was like, oh, what's, what's up with the virus thing? So everybody's kind of anxious about it. Uh, the people hearing more bad news, you know, more cases happening. Also, like a really the first first case in the United States, you know, in the found from the COVID case were found in here in Seattle. Really? Yes. Yeah, person traveled from like a, from the east to Seattle, and he didn't feel good, and he went to the hospital. Like a, you know, like a, you know, the doctors like it was like, a, what is this? Is that the COVID? So it's like a sentence is crazy. Also, like a nursing home with a mm -hmm. retirement house, you know, which is uh, twenty kilometers from my house. Mm -hmm. uh, he really, really bad. You know, many wow. on. Uh, you know, uh, folks, you know, passed away because of the COVID. So we had really the, the first thing in the city and had to face with it. And we started to keep hearing and like, it's just like scary, crazy news. At the same time, I was supposed to go to like a Korea. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this, I don't think that's a good idea. So 10 days. <laughs> and really, actually, I packed everything. I didn't know what to do, but I packed everything. So like my flight was like a Sunday morning, like a 10 o'clock or something like that. I was ready to leave my house, but I wasn't still sure. I was I able to mm. come back as a wife? That's a kind of scary mm. moment. Okay, mm. and I decided this is not worth it. You know, probably yeah. gonna lose the money. You know, probably they're not gonna pay me for my time, but it's okay, screw it. I'm not gonna go. So at the same time, I decided, I told my wife and my family, like, I'm not going, she said, no way, it's no way. It's too critical, the time is too critical. And as soon as I, the first thing I did was I'm gonna call the Korean uh, the orchestra manager over there. And as he said, you know, see, pick up the phone right away. So like, yeah, I knew it, don't come, don't come. Just, you know, you know, you, you know we canceled everything, don't worry about it. So, so that was, you know, I canceled my travel like uh, yeah, like uh, three hours before like my you know my plane was supposed to leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, were you going to be at the uh, international trombone festival in Japan that 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 summer? No, I wasn't the planning because they didn't invite me. <laughs> I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, That's, okay, wrong question then. <laughs> because you know, like, I, I, you know, I, I, seriously, like, it's you know, the, those you know, international trombone festivals. That's for like, you know, for the you know, really the superstar and for the young people. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like, they don't want to, you know, they don't need me. Come on. So I'm not just an orchestra player. Yeah, of course. Again, I did. So You're much. just the principal trombone of Seattle Symphony. <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> Yeah, because you know, there's so many young, you know, like, talented players. They, they should give, you know, like, I, I think, I personally think, yeah, like, you know, these are like really the hot, you know, hot players, you know, like a very seasoned player in the market, you mm -hmm. know, uh, that they should be invited, you know, they should be invited at first. And also, like, young, you know, like a very, very mm -hmm. young talent. Or like a unique player like you, just so, you know, we always, wow. you know, yeah, your material, like, it really inspired me, you know, like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, all the technique and the compositions so I really cheers to you, you know? Wow. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. But well, nothing compared to, to what you, 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 you can do on the trombone. Uh, you know, I was gonna tell you that it's funny because when I was 
in last February, last year, in February, I was talking with uh, Takari Bond. I don't know if you have, you've met him uh, in the past. Tak Bond, the, the, he was bass trombone, he's a Thai artist. He was bass trombone in Malaysia, Philharmonic. Okay. And, you know, he, he was living in Singapore back then, or, yeah, I think, he, no, in Hong Kong. Um, and I remember that back then, in, in Spain, we were, most of us, we were acceptable, you know, about uh, the virus. We were like, you know, this is not going to come here. Things in Italy were quite bad. But, you know, I had the following months planned uh, ahead. I knew what I had to do for following months. And this guy from Hong Kong, from Hong Kong he told me, man, I think you're going to have to cancel everything. Oh. And I'm like no no this is not gonna happen and then in march suddenly from one day another we had to uh, go to into lockdown and i remember then at the beginning of march uh how people from the states a lot of friends that that, that i have on facebook they they were acting the same way i was acting a month before and i remember i was started i started to advise them okay take this seriously because this is something big and it's gonna get there soon yeah. <laughs> i remember that you now back then like 12 months ago like i remember the reaction because we are rehearsing but 11th was really the uh, the last day we got together as a whole orchestra the right mm -hmm. now like the seattle symphony like uh, you know any other orchestras in the united states we are we are playing we are doing like a you know, smaller size because you know safety protocols in the state or washington where i live mm -hmm. and it's you know 40 people on the stage so mm. that's a very limited capacity uh so like we can't we're not gonna do like a model six or model eight mm. of course but you know we're, i remember like yesterday in the march 11th march 11th was really the last time we got together on the stage as a full orchestra we are rehearsing um yeah we knew kind of we kind of knew it was coming that morning but we are rehearsing my and tchaikovsky five so mm. we um, that's what the Wednesday morning, like, you know, our French home, you know, we, I still remember we did like a second movement uh, on uh, the first day, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, our French home player that, you know, our principal French home player sounds great, you know, sounds great solo, uh, yeah. but he was happy about it. He was complaining about it after the rehearsal. Ah, I didn't feel good. <laughs> you know, we always complain. So yes. like the next morning and like he played a beautiful beautiful solo then like you know we started rehearsing in a second room and i was like everybody felt the same way oh my god is this the last time we're gonna play together mm -hmm. yeah that was so strange and the end of the second movement, towards the end of the second movement, and our general manager came on the stage and in the middle and the middle of the rehearsal you know mm -hmm. which doesn't happen especially in the united states because the union law you know you can't you can't stop you no one can stop you know like your rehearsal or something like that mm. so like he came up and on the stage like everybody sorry to inform you have to leave you know because wow. you, know, say, you know like a state you know couldn't declare like a state uh the state of the emergency i was like everybody was like mm. oh so this is mm. this is it. So we didn't know. <clears throat> we didn't know when to, when's the next time like we're gonna get together. So then, you know, same night, uh, that our tuba player's birthday was happening. So like we went to out. Man, we drank until four in the morning. <laughs> so this is the last time we're gonna die. Something like that. Just stupid. <laughs> but then, then everything started. You locked down. We didn't get together. We didn't see each other. Like you know, month after month. So yeah, I couldn't go outside for a couple of weeks at least. And you know, trying to get like you know vitamin D. So, and I didn't go ski that month, of course. Yeah. Yeah, that's a scary moment. We didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you know, vaccines, you know, like a vaccination, you know, like a vaccines more like rolling out and the more people mm -hmm. get more vaccinated. I see, uh, I'm one optimistic, you know, I, I hope, you know, we're going to go back to normal, you know, very mm -hmm. soon. Yeah, I, yeah. I, kind of I, I kind of feel the same. How, how is the vaccination going in? in the states um, i've heard that that they are vaccinating many people even, even in disneyland <laughs> <laughs> yeah like you know we need a space you know america is a big place you know many people live here so 
Uh, so I got a vaccination, like I, uh, I got a Pfizer three weeks ago, and the next one is a Tuesday. So uh, I'm very excited about it. And mm -hmm. I heard uh, after the second shot, you know, you feel terrible. So <laughs> I gotta be, I gotta be sitting there. That's why, like, I, I wanted to do it today because you know, I knew yeah. I, you know, I moved everything for the next week's schedule. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, you know, everybody said like, you know, after the second shot, you know, because in the Pfizer and the Moderna, I think uh, mm -hmm. the another one for European one, like, you have to do twice. You know, between. Yes. You know, you have to have like a, just a gap period, you know, between the first and second one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everybody said like a second one was when you feel terrible. Yeah. Just like laying in bed, like a shaving cold, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like a drinking, drinking coffee like this. <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. I'm ready. I'm ready. I take it. I, I know it's like many people uh, question about a vaccine, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. Like it's. it's kind of a, an a affordable risk <laughs> that we yeah. can take maybe right now. You know, yesterday I was supposed to get the uh, first um, AstraZeneca vaccine here in, oh. in Spain but, uh, from my university, but they, they didn't contact me uh, with time in advance and I couldn't do it. So I'm going to have my first oh. uh, shot in, in two weeks, but it, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, so it's right fine. now, so right now we cannot get any anywhere closer you know because maybe i, I could I, I i don't have the okay what i was gonna i was gonna say something you've been member in the metro at uh, the metropolitan opera in yeah. the past mm -hmm. um you know you know way better what's going on in 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 the states uh, i have no idea and and i would like to uh, of course this pandemic affected every orchestra uh even the the biggest ones but uh, we've heard news from uh, the metropolitan opera that they really suffered this lockdown so uh can you tell us a little bit uh, what happened there and how is the situation does it look like it's gonna improve well i can speak for like them because you know mm -hmm. i left on the metropolitan mm -hmm. opera. So yes of course but you know i of course you know i still keep in touch with you know my older colleagues and the colleagues mm. you know we work with uh first of all like i think uh yeah uh the world uh my co you know former colleagues you know uh, viola player to the man you know he he got a COVID and he passed away i think he was that's really? what i got another april uh, may he wasn't an old guy at all so uh mid 50s you know super nice guy so that was really really sad news you know of course you know that's was already part of like on the pandemic no one knew what's going to be happening and everybody's scared also like in a healing and news like that you know like oh my god like, and i you know he i used to i used to a uh, couple with him and it's really hit and we know uh we know each other you know you, we know each other the family members and so that's hit me really hard uh, like everybody else and right now the work situation <clears throat> uh, as for the contract and everything in the Metropolitan Opera, it's disaster because they stop mm. paying. Um, they stop paying. Okay, I know because you know, like a, you know, we are non-profit organizations. You know, orchestral mm. arts organizations. Like, you know, we have to sell the tickets and then we get, you know, we get paid. I understand that. Uh, the, uh, our orchestra try to uh, survive like the same way. Mm -hmm. But our management, uh, and also like in our like, union, so also like our you know, orchestra member agreed, you know, certain kind of pay cut, you know, of course. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. This is not a good time to ask. No. Hey, <laughs> I, need, you know, I play, I play great, uh, great recital last year, and I play good. You know, I, I'm a good trombone player. Give me more money. I don't think that's a good idea. You know, to ask. <laughs> Sorry, yes. like raids, you know, like yeah, I, I deserve the better. You know, it's just the worst time actually. Yeah. So like we agree, like a certain cut pay cut, but they're still paying us. Not, you know, could be more, of course, yeah, yeah. but it paying us. But you know, the, the, the metaphor Hopper, they cut the code. You know, they cut the code in the March. You know, second week of the March. That's that's mm -hmm. not you know, I I would have never imagined that because you know, from yep. outside, what you feel is like they must. The, it has to be a super rich in institution, you know, the the Metropolitan Opera, all the um, streaming that they do, you know, they even stream some operas 
in, in, in a town next to my hometown, uh, wow. in the cinema, you know, they sell uh, uh, tickets for that. So, so, you know, you would, I would have never imagined that that could happen to, to Metropolitan. Yeah, it's quite a shocking, you know, they said, you know, I, I'm sure like an over, but, you know, just a running budget. Okay, like a Metropolitan Opera, like itself, like, you know, 2,000 people walking there. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how many unions involved. Of course, it's a large, large company. So, like a large institution, as uh, you know, talking about as a mu uh, music industry. So, mm -hmm. I got 2,000 people. I know it's hard to pay, like, you know, the, for the you know, taking care of the 2,000 people, the paychecks, but yeah, like mm -hmm. you said, you know, they, they're making money too. They like at the same time, you know, not at the same time because they 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 had like a good business, you know, structures. Like, you know, my hometown too, like my mom uh, <clears throat> goes to a movie theater to watch, you know, the Metro Proton live streaming. Mm -hmm. like, you know, just like, you know, uh, I don't think it's live anymore, but uh, yeah, my, even my mom goes there to like enjoy the opera with a big screen, like mm -hmm. a great sound. So mm -hmm. like, they had like, a platform to, you know, have like a revenue. Mm -hmm. So of course I understand just to like a large, you know, like a large company like the Met, his running cost is humongous. I don't know like uh, what's mm -hmm. a running cost per year but mm. come on just like you know, people not getting paid for like a 52 weeks so like you know mm. since last 2020 march that is joke to me that's really really uh too cold for me mm. so i know many people had to give up living in new york city i understand new york city is a very very expensive place mm. to live and without getting any paychecks you know how are you going to survive yeah that's um Yeah, maybe it's you know it's a good time to follow uh, Ian's advice. You know, I, I had a, an, an interview with uh, Ian Balsfield and I asked him uh, which is the best way to uh, make money with the trombone, and he said, "Well, just sell it." So <laughs> maybe that could be that could be a, a proper time to sell. You have many trombones there. Oh, I have them all. I got downstairs. I'm I'm a crazy corrector actually. I love. I actually I love like all the instruments. I love all three instruments. For example, I still use it. This one. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a uh, an old con, an original electric heart. It's bent. Mm -hmm. So this is electric heart. I use it for the Brahms symphony or like a La Fond, you know, like a Lavelle. You know, it works great. So you have to have like a right mass piece. And, yes. Uh, then yeah, so like it works great. I also have old con 62H, and it's original electric heart. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just love the sound of it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, of course, I use, I love, like, you know, my, you know, instrument, the Shires, because, you know, plays well. And, you know, people in an orchestra, they, they love much more than, like, my previous instruments. Mm -hmm. You know, it sits better, brings well, like, you know, we can hear each other much better. So, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, some people uh, has already uh, written a few questions uh, on the live chat. Uh, we, we will later address some of them. You know, because uh, my idea was now to talk a little bit about your life and then we could move uh, forward to know about your uh, life experience in the orchestra. And also uh, we could talk at the end about technique and, and also address some issues that appear from from time to time. Uh, and, and I'm sure you you reflected most of this in the new book that you wrote uh, during the pandemic. So feel free, uh, everybody, to write your questions for Ko Koichiro. It's five euros each. No, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> now, now it's going to be free. So and feel free to share this video with your friends so we, we can uh, learn from Koichiro, his experience, and everything he has to share with us. Uh, so, how was your? Um, you you grew up in, in in Japan, right? Did you? Were you born in in Tokyo or or a surrounding uh, town? Or can you yeah, tell like us a little bit about your childhood and how did you get involved in music? <laughs> so people know about you. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun, like, you know, like everybody else, like, you know, I, you know, I was born in Japan, uh, the Tokyo, Japan, uh, grew up in, you know, outside of Tokyo, because, you know, when I was a six, my parents bought like a little bigger house, I was, you mm -hmm. know, living in Tokyo is super expensive, also, like, mm -hmm. we, are, uh, we are still living with uh, my grandparents, you know, which is, you know, my mom's side's parents, 
Yeah, mm. I miss them so much. But you know, they passed away like 20 years ago. But you know, we you know used to live together. Yeah. So, but other family member wasn't happy about it because you know, like you know, because everybody loved our grandparents. Everybody, every single person in the family wanted to live with them. But somehow, my family was chosen. Anyway, so but you know that and you know that's. You know, my parents had, you know, uh, two other kids, uh, you know, other than me. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, space where you're you know, living, it's a little bit too, you know, small. So uh, my father you know, decided to move out to, you know, you know, light center of the city. We, you know, we moved away from Tokyo, like maybe uh, not far away, like a 35 kilometers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it still takes like an hour to, you know, by the train ride somehow, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and so I moved uh outside of tokyo when i was six first grader mm-hmm. and i went to a local school and i didn't start playing in a trombone until age 12. yeah age 12 or 13. i think 12. Wow. <laughs> yeah but you know the reason why i didn't you know uh, i didn't like the music at all when i was a kid i was playing a football football the, mm. yeah football like you know soccer you know like in japan like it was, it was a huge soccer um uh, soccer country i didn't like the baseball because i'm terrible with it so i i started skiing maybe a little bit later so i was like a very outdoor because like, there's no internet of course you know mm-hmm. when i was a kid you know, basically just running around you know in the hills looking at back you know backyard you know trying to catch the snakes you know on the ground something like that just, you know i was weird <laughs> Yeah, so I was really detached from like, you know, like your lives as an artist, whatever. But my mom used to be the violinist, and my mm-hmm. father used to be playing the trombone in an you know, orchestra in Tokyo. So there's instruments everywhere in my house. My sister uh, plays piano. Uh, another sister, like number two, we're going to see plays a viola in uh, Budapest uh, Festival Orchestra. Still. Mm-hmm. Still playing there, and so, and you and you played there a few years later. I I, I read. Yeah, first time because like, they launched orchestra uh, that they did like a national audition. So I was just a student. I just mm-hmm. went to it. Uh, and I played for the Ian Fisher. So I said, "All right, so uh, I give you a contract." But the contract <laughs> means anything back then, like an exhibition in the Budapest in Hungary. So like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. So like, every time uh, they didn't form, uh, I'm gonna talk about it again later. They're gonna yes. Like, Experience in Hungary. This was quite interesting. So, okay, okay. so when I was a kid, you know, I didn't, I didn't play any music up till like a twelve or thirteen. I kind of regret. I, mm-hmm. At least I, you know, I wanted to play the piano. I should have played the piano, yeah, but mm-hmm. I, I hate it. That was torture. So really, people like, usually oh, hate viola, but not piano. Yeah, like I didn't tell <laughs> tell my sisters. You know, I have no comments. Okay, <laughs> I like. I like it. Oh, I can me read. too, me too, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm just messing with them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, but, you know, my father played, you know, like I said, my father used to be like a professional trombonist in Tokyo mm-hmm. and instruments everywhere. And one day, one day I heard, I heard a symphony orchestra concert, you know, where he was playing on. So and they are playing uh, Dvorak Ninth Symphony. Dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. I was hooked into it. Like a kid, you know, the really the first time, you know, probably you have the same experience the first time you see the E.T. Yeah. Or uh, like a Star Wars, you know, Force Awakens, whatever. You know, just mm-hmm. like the music is so powerful, right? So that's kind of a sensation that I got, you know, Dvorak Ninth. I was like, oh my God. You said, like, wow, this sounds so cool. I want to mm-hmm. play trombone. I thought I thought that's a melody, you know, you know, beginning of the fourth movement. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. I thought that was trombone. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it should be. It should be. It should, it should be. be trombone. Of course, yeah. I agree with hundred percent. So I thought, I thought, man, I mean, that sounds so cool. I want to play the trombone. So mm-hmm. from even I haven't started, even I haven't touched my, you know, the trombone. I decided, okay, I'm going to be a professional orchestra musician. Wow. <laughs> that was, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't even have... And, and I'm sure after 10 years, you found out that that melody wasn't for trombone. And then you you were like, oh, I spent 10 years of my life. <laughs> uh, I would Point. say like a, maybe like a 12 months or like a, maybe like a seven months. So I, I joined a local. Of course, I played in a school band, you know, etc. Mm-hmm. 
Um, mm-hmm. I was so into like a swimming too, like a back then when I was a kid. So mm-hmm. because my parents forced me to go to like a swimming school every Wednesday night and mm-hmm. Sunday morning. That was torture, but I loved it. So mm-hmm. anyway, so, <laughs> so, anyway, so I said like, you know, mom, I want to quit. I want to quit like a swimming. I can swim just fine. Just don't worry about it. But I want to join the local youth orchestra. You know, I still remember the name of it, you know, Funawa. Uh, Junior Orchestra of Funabashi, which is like I grew up. So I joined the orchestra. It says, you know, only one trombone, or there may be two trombones, you know, five trumpets, something like that. You know, I had a great mm-hmm. experience. So I keep bugging, you know, I keep, I was keep bugging like a new music director, like, hey, we're going to do like a door joke night. So we're going to do it. Oh, it's too <laughs> hard. We don't have enough people just to, at least just can we do like a reading session? <laughs> And back then, there's no PDF, of course. And that's back then, like it's not like a like a golden cherry, you know, music. You, know, you can't not just download the parts; and they have mm-hmm. to actually rent it. So on the first day, everybody was so excited about it. You know, they handed out, you know, yeah. the trombone parts and the trumpet yeah. parts. Like kids are so excited about. It. So they gave me like a trombone one part. Yeah, it's so excited. You know, just a dreams come true. So. <laughs> What is this? It's not bass graph. <laughs> this is number one. What's this tasset? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Tasset. Also, like, it's just like an art craft. And the fourth movement started. Yeah, I know this. I got this. I get this. But where's the melody? Why everybody else is playing like a trombone player? Bop, 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 <laughs> I was like, all right, this is not good. I, I, I think I picked the wrong <laughs> instruments. <laughs> so, yeah, just, I wish it just was a French horn, you have to, you know. So that's what my really the first experience, like a, how I started playing the trombone. You know, yeah. when, whenever whenever I feel like, like that, like I, have, I, I should have chosen a, a different instrument, I just, I, just, I just say to myself, at least I can play glissando. And, oh, that's yeah. the, and that's what makes me happy and and that makes me feel i took the right <laughs> yeah, it's very hard like, like, like people you know people like I underestimate the gris sound but the gris sound is the, 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 the most important key elements to be like a better trombone player i think no. yeah uh, you know i want to talk about like a lot of like uh, of course yes. i'm kidding at the joke aside and the gris and reason why like a gris sound is so good because oftentimes when very the first problem we have is mm-hmm. not using enough air, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, without you know using air, what happened is your vibration, you know, vibration mm-hmm. stops. You know, note mm-hmm. by note. For example, if we play, if you're trying to, uh, if you're not blowing through, you know, your goals, you know, your lips go. Mm-hmm. Rest, stop, rest, stop, rest. If you do that, if you drive like you know like a more the most expensive sports car, if you do that, you know like all right, so five kilo stop, five kilo stop, you know you're gonna ruin the engine, right? The same thing. This is water, I think. So uh, if you have a problem like a blowing through, if your teacher keep telling you you have to use more air, I think you start with the grisando, yes. so that yeah, your your chops always need to be you know together. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, so since this is trombone thing, the guy, you know, mm. I, I wanna, yeah, yes. I usually do the morning time. I really, really do Gris Sandy, like. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, This has nothing to do with music, just, you know, how to operate my trombone mm-hmm. with my lips. So, I you know, every time you play, the views go up. So I think you can play as much as you. <laughs> no, <Really? laughs> no, no, but it's, uh, it sounds great. It, what uh, the also the interesting thing about uh, trombone is that whenever a horn player unless they are playing the same note but whenever they have to play uh, legato uh, in between different notes they have the bass they don't stop the air but yeah. but us if we don't use any tongue uh, 
uh, movement, uh, there's going to be a glissando. So yep. it's especially challenging, I think, playing legato on the trombone. I think it's really, it's a great question, actually, a great topic. Like, I know it's, you know it's kind of boring, but, you know, we have to talk about it because, you know, we play music. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gergiev was uh, the principal conductor uh, when I was in the Metropolitan Opera. Mm -hmm. So he said, like, legato, legato, legato. You know, he, he, he always wanted to hear, like, a more sound, more legato, no, you know, just no... Uh, the, I don't know, just, you know, uh, unnecessary mm -hmm. gap between the notes. Legato, legato. Even he was telling to singers, legato mm -hmm. means singing. You're not doing it. I was like, to the singer. So like, everybody's like, whoa, mm -hmm. that is, <laughs> that is a ballsy move, right? So mm -hmm. uh, legato means singing. I was like, I still remember mm -hmm. that after 20 years. Yes, I absolutely agree with. And of course, legato means singing. Singing means a legato. And oftentimes, you know, we have a problem among the trombone players because we have, you know, pipes, right? We have to mm. move this, you know, like I have to move very really quick like this, but, you know, just distract everything. I, you know, like it's the same as a singing, I think. You have to sing. You can't sing like a do, la, si, to, mi, fa, do. You know, mm. if you sing like that, it's going to sound like this. I try to use more like a ah, or a ah, la, you know, more, mm. like a more vowel. Mm. So always associate with a small a. Ah. Of course, you know, you have to use a little bit heavier attack or like a lighter attack based on the register. For example, you can't pro, uh, you can't use a servo da when you play mm. the high F. Right, so like I'm saying, you're gonna kill yourself. Mm -hmm. you cannot you say like an you know, E? You know, you when you play mile three, E E E E. e. You don't want to sound like that. So no. like you know, I always associate it with like a, your singing voice. So mm -hmm. I always use, of course, you're gonna know, start with the da whatever, uh, the based on the register. Uh, as the note goes lower, I use a little bit thicker uh, syllable, like a da. And if I play, you know, note like pedal. Mm -hmm. I go tall like this, but when I go high, I go. Or like an E. Uh, so e. Mm -hmm. anyway, E or like a T. I like a T, like a couple of T. T, mm -hmm. T. Always associated with air. Also like a little, a uh, little A. You know, like a mm -hmm. ta. Always associated with like a little small A. Ta or la or to. You know, ta mm -hmm. like this. So that little after the pronunciation, like a little, uh, you know, like a syllable and a vowel mm -hmm. helps mm -hmm. keeping air. So, mm -hmm. um, I was talking to like my students, you know, the other day they're gonna find a dying lesson. So, all right, so like it's a really amazing. Like you, you don't have any problems, you know, connecting notes, you know, because you really, really, exp you know, I, you know, I really loved you in playing, because it's like a, I can see the music line and I can see the thing. Uh, but like, the surprisingly, many trombone players are having a very, very hard time to play legato. I was kind of mm -hmm. amazed. So, like, you know, one thing, you know, starting with the grisandi, uh, of course, before you get to the trombone, just sing out, you know, the, the practicing room, and, you know, it's a, the, the safest place in the world. Mm -hmm. you, so just to sing out, just walk around, or like I go outside, like a sing, it's a little song. Then come back and then you can pick up the trombone. You'll be mm -hmm. amazed how much easier to play. Yes, because so, at, at the, you know, I was going to say that at the end, um, there are many different ways of approaching uh, trombone technique. There are many different ways of approaching breathing or uh, practice sessions. But at the end, I, I, you, I, I think same as you, like you, you're going to find the easiest and most efficient way of playing the trombone so it's as relaxed as possible. So since uh, language is our way of communication and singing is an extension of language <laughs> you know it's yeah. kind of a natural way to reflect that idea through the through the horn you know if you want we can go 
deep into this you know technical stuff now and later we can talk about other 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 things because you know even oh. people people asked and, and maybe we can uh, later uh, answer this question like how to alvaro garcia he's asking how to advance with your daily routine and don't feel stuck what daily exercises are the best for you oh my god it's like a day by day like a, many people it's a based on the your level the talent level because again like a talent like you know like a talent you know like a person like a ricardo you know he just speak up the whole point at home i cannot do that you know because you no, know, I have I, to. I, me neither <laughs> <laughs> come on you sound great man so like i really really love you know your videos so i was like so wow this is so good so the problem is Like, you know, even like a penis, Peter Steiner, just pick up the horn, just like in a plane like this. I can't do it. I'm very, very structural trombone player because then I have to know everything. I really, really have to know everything, you know, before I play. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't know anything, but sometimes like, I really, really have to know because otherwise I can't do anything right. So the daily routine I wrote, because this is a very uh, reason why I wrote the book, because number one, the pandemic, I always wanted to do it, but I never had the time because, you know, I work with the symphony orchestra, I travel everywhere. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't have the time. And, you know, if I have the free time, you know, I want to go ski, you know, I want to do something else. I want to meet friends and uh, have a dinner with something. So I can't just uh, sit in front of a computer uh to try to figure out how to write in ace notes yeah that's how i started actually during the pandemic i could not took me 15 minutes to write one bar <laughs> yeah just yeah it me crazy. so I, i'm not but i always ask my librarian or like my you know composer friend or i ask my students to write the music you know you know use a finale or whatever mm -hmm. so anyway that's a side of story Daily routine, the reason why like, I put it, because, you know, like, that I need to do, you know, in an orchestra. For, for example, you know, my book, I put you know, a lot of, like, a long, not a long time, a lot of easy, easy, easy lip slur. Uh, that go to, like, um, you know, I send a Ricardo, they can go to, like, a pedal, you know, note. You know, early part of the day, I really, really want to loosen up, make sure my air is moving into the trombone. And a moving air, probably like everybody uses the same phrase, way I look at, you know, your moving air, almost like a, uh, creating a small tornado mm -hmm. like that into yes. the trombone. <sighs> little spin. <sighs> so that, you know, like, uh, you know, my tone has a little direction. Also, like an air and the tone and the music line never go this way. You know, always go this way, right? Mm -hmm. Like, a, yeah, like, a, yeah, even like a slow, uh, lamente kind of melody, like. Yeah. I, I, I saw in your book, well, yes, please go ahead and then I ask. Yeah, like the you know, air, you know, vibration and the phrase uh, never go this way. By you know, the just... way, just to add some pressure, Martin Cypress is in the chat. And he and he's saying he looks Who's all Martin Sippers. Martin, <laughs> Why, what is he doing? Like, that, doesn't he have like a better thing to do? Yeah. <laughs> he's saying he looks so tall today. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna kick I'm gonna kick you out of the chat, Martin. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I told him. I told him. Yeah, you look is very short this morning. You know, he came to Mike's you know, like a master class. You know, how tall? You like 152 centimeters? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, but you know he's probably like he's like a 55 kilos, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so like I, I, you know, like I said, you know, again, like you know, all this. Of course, we can talk about the mechanics, you know, <laughs> buzzing, you know, on like a stretch. Of course, first of all, if you have like a bad posture, okay. Uh, let me ask you another question to like an orchestra musicians. You know, you want to see the conductor like this, conducting like this, or like a, uh, you know, like a. Uh, Mazel, like Mazel, like always standing tall. Mm. Yeah, I was really amazed. <laughs> I was really amazed, like, you know, I remember the first time I played it with Jaffa van Zayden. Oh my God, mm. you know, I thought that he was like, you know, like a three meter tall, but mm. he's not. But in the podium, like a podium, like you know, in the front of orchestra, man, he looked like a giant. Mm. Yeah, anyway, so so you want to you wanna see the conductor like this? Or like you want to see the conductor like, you this know, standing? This one, this one. Yeah. So, <laughs> Same as trombone, you know, like, you know, posture makes everything, you know, easier and the better. Uh, also, like I said, 
uh, I always tell myself because it's easy to forget sometimes. That's why I like, like standing up when I play trombone because, you know, reminding everything. And so another thing they're going to speak in the uh, posture, there is a like, famous, famous old Japanese conductor. He was, you know, he conducted in Chicago Symphony right before he died. Mm. So like uh, his name is like a Meister Asahina. Also like, uh, you know, you can find like uh, the YouTube video I play you know, uh, stupidly loud, you know, say Joe Zawa's concert, <laughs> you know, on YouTube, I played the show Steve Five. Like, you can see, like, a Sage, he had, you know, like, some, like, a health issue. He has been, you know, dealing mm. with, you know, it's called, on the health issues, back pain over the, you know, over the years. But in a, in a podium, you know, like, in an orchestra, he looks like a giant. Mm. So he's so tall. I was like, oh, my God. That's your responsibility, you know, if you, <clears throat> I, I don't want to be like in a harsh, like in a stupid, like in a school teachers, but I'm telling you, if you don't want to keep your posture straight when you play the trombone, you know, if, if that's a too much to ask you, mm -hmm. I think you're in the wrong business, you know what yes. I mean? So, it's so not that always, difficult, it's not that difficult. <laughs> yeah, I always, you know, sometimes, you know, just, you know, the, the young conductor is just stupid enough to come to talk to me yeah how do you think okay oh, like you you've been orchestra for a long time so can you know can you can you give us some comments yeah uh, you your reading you know skill you know score reading skills are fantastic and your tempo is good you look fantastic you i like your hair but i really don't like your posture i can't see you you know if you cannot if you like a trombone player first trombone player can't see the beat like what am i supposed to do what am i supposed to I mean, like, you're standing in front of 3,000 people, like, you know, are, are you comfortable charging enough, enough money for that? Anyway, so... <laughs> you know, so. you know, uh, I, I was going to say that one of the worst experiences I've, I've had in orchestra I was playing Magic Flute uh, in, in Malaysia oh. in my first year. And, you know, I love the piece, but the, the conductor... Well, and, and I don't even remember, remember the name and it's better because I don't want to <laughs> give him bad publicity. But, you know, he, he used to be so th theatrical that at the end it looked so absurd that he went, when he wanted to do like subito pianos, he went down the stand so we couldn't see his hands. <laughs> And a couple of times we had to raise our hand like, Maestro, we cannot see your hands <laughs> because he was doing like going under the under the stand. Um, and it's probably like a conductor said, oh, I'm doing anything, you know, what are you talking about? That's like a Vado was doing in the, in, the, in the YouTube video. Like, how come you guys, you guys can't follow me? So, uh, anyway. <laughs> so like, well, often, you know, oftentimes, yeah, I don't want to talk like trash talk like, about a conductor. It's, you know, because you know, some of them, like, it's fantastic. But mm -hmm. if you want to do like a spontaneous and non-conducting an emotion in a concert, you know, you have to have a great trust between the conductors and orchestra. Mm -hmm. I remember that, you know, just Jim, you know, like, <laughs> you know, he's a Mr. Scandal. But, uh, you know, when he was on, when he was doing, uh, he was, you know, back in his heyday, you know, 90s, you know, he was amazing. You know, he was, he was amazing. I personally don't respect him what he did, of course, because, you know, I'm a father too. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't, I, that needs to be punished, of course, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, that needs to be like, you know, uh, that's, um, you know, he had to pay the price anyway, but he rehearsed, 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 you know, he rehearsed until like he really, really want to get like, a sound out of it on our orchestra. So mm -hmm. like in the middle of the show, like, you know, I still remember like in the Tosca, you know, like a very opening in the Tosca, beam, beam, bam, beam, cut and opens and, um, uh, before the, the soprano, like a tenor comes in, uh, there's, there's one spot, you know, orchestra takes over like a two minutes. Like he, he started conducting like this, you know, you know, Levi used to like really rhythmical stuff like that. He set up the tempo and all of a sudden, middle of the show, he just... Dropped his hand, you know, looking at the orchestra on the stage, smiling, you know, giggling around. So, and he back on the track right away, of course. And, but 
if you want to do like some cool stuff uh, for the ion conductors, you have to have you have to gain the trust first. You have mm-hmm. to gain the, the respect first. You can't mm-hmm. just like a mimic like a, you know the Maestro Abado or your know, Maris Jansons mm-hmm. or like a Termicano. Like and they do like a magical moment. You know you have to know what's music, what's like a, you know you have to gain a trust from the orchestra yes. too. You can't just do this. You, know, you can't just copy like a girl gave. Mm, no, no, I watched no. them in YouTube. It has to be walking. No, it's come on, man. It's mm. a, <laughs> you're conducting. You're conducting in front of like you know, like hundred you know hundred mm. professionals, and you can't you can't fall. Also, like mm. behind you, you're three thousand people paying for you, paying the you know for the tickets to watch mm. you. So, <clears throat> like I said, posture, I'm, posture. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, like, you know, I don't want to talk about conductor anymore. So, <laughs> so if you want to, you know, also, like, you know, for our duty or the responsibility of making music, right? Or not orchestra musician or mm-hmm. any musician. I, I think, you know, vibration, sound, also the airstream, also music phrase, you can never go this way. Uh, there's a nice bottle of wine, by the yes. way. Yes. So, yeah. So, always. I'm on water now. <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking coffee. Like if starting drinking like a wine like at 10 a.m. here, like I'm, I, I need some help, you know. <laughs> so music and the vibration are going to sound always go this way, which direction? Like in any kind of music. <laughs> Yes. I, I composed some melody. Like I'm gonna write it down right now. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Feel free to copy that. Okay. He was playing my piece, uh, Nuria, uh, for trombone and piano. You can listen to it in my website. <laughs> it's in the description. But this wasn't planified. You know, he just played it <laughs> because. By the way, you're gonna play that piece in in in, in May, right? Yeah. It's, you know, uh, let me talk about it a little bit because you know I've been, I've been doing like a Martin Skipper came in, like, you know, my class. You know, I want you to invite him like my class as a guest speaker. Uh, uh, what I was gonna say, yeah, I do have like an online platform, like an online school. It's called like a T Bone School of Japan you know, because. I try to do like a two different languages, but it's such a disaster. Mm-hmm. You know, like a one hour class becoming like a three hours because you're gonna have to go this way, this way, this way, like you know, to, to using in you know, multiple different languages. Uh, that, that didn't, uh, it's, it's no one's was happy. So I tried a couple of times, mm-hmm. but you know, uh, basically I wanted to offer to the younger students uh, that, you know, it become it's kind of unique kind of online school. Uh, the youngest age of the you know, participants, you know, she, she comes in like every month. She has never missed my classes, and I'm really grateful. She's 14, incredible, talented trombone uh, student, and the oldest one, like 62. And I, I was kind of expecting like many college, t- uh, college uh, students mm-hmm. or high school students. Uh, would show up or like a weekend warriors, you know, you know, people who play, you know, people who play trombone just for fun. Mm. No, I, I, so I, I got a participant from like young professional orchestra musicians too, mm-hmm. I was like, uh, which is kind of fun because, you know, the, they always have some issues, you know, on their playing. They got another orchestra, but they don't know how to deal with, like, you know, uncomfortableness and lips, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm having fun. So like, uh, <clears throat> I've been doing like a, since uh, September, October. Uh, the reason why I am still, you know, my house not ended up in jail because, mm. yeah, because like, I have something to do every week. Of course. You know, I have to prepare for the class. You know, I have to get, you know, microphone. And I, and trust me, like, I'm not like a tech guy, like a Sim Martin or like you, Ricardo, because I didn't own. Well, but you mic. got a good mic. You got a good mic. Yeah, because, you know, I'm an old guy. I have to spend the money. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Well, I, I love it. Like, uh, now I like like audio gears. I really, really want to take like, you know, the classes, you know, how to record good, you know, engineering class or whatever. Anyway, so <clears throat> it's a little like, a, uh, again, just like a, just a little online school, keep me motivated, uh, keeping me, uh, my mind straight. Otherwise I can go crazy, but you know, what are you going to do like, during the pandemic? It says no walk. It says no concert. I can't even. I can go ski now because the ski hill is open. <laughs> I, like, I can't. I can't go to you know restaurants. Like uh, my kids. And, you, know, you know. You know, Koichiro, 
uh, I have here uh, a video that I prepared from your T-Bone school so people can have, can have a better idea it's one of the videos you you posted uh, playing David and then saying something so people can can see the, the short video a little bit I'm gonna just share it so oh, yeah. Okay, we are back now uh, with, with Koichiro. As you see, this was his uh, online academy that he was talking about, Ibon. And you were saying something about uh, that, 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 that unknown piece, Nuria. You were saying something about that. I just composed it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Pretty much great, you know, already published under your name. So, uh, yeah, like a new year, like I would like to play because you know, I really, really like the piece because, you know, I don't like it super contemporary because, you know, we do that all the time in an mm -hmm. orchestra, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, a new piece like uh, Anthony Barfield, I really liked his music and mm -hmm. also like, uh, yeah, of course, your piece. Uh, I don't want to do, yeah, I, I just want to play some like, uh, like a nice music. Wait, this is my piece. <laughs> yeah, that's the melody. That's the main melody. <laughs> uh, anyway, so because of the T Bone School in Japan, you know, because you're not gonna students, you know, had you know uh, had the patient to put up with me for all of those months. So I just want to you know send some little gift. Of course, yeah, I'm not gonna send a chocolate or anything. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do like a live stream concert for them. And mm -hmm. I was looking for like a, some of uh, the space in here, but because of the COVID, it's very, very hard. I can get into the concert hall with like my pianist, but I cannot use like, their Wi-Fi, something like that, like a safety protocols. Then I was talking to uh, uh, Dr. Palmer. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a well-known professor uh, and also like a great, fantastic, you know, a great friend of mine, also like a fantastic trombone player and trombone faculty, I'm a trombone professor at mm -hmm. Columbus, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, like, you know, they're hosting the like, ITF this year. Mm -hmm. So I talked to him and you know, he knows how to live stream, you know, uh, left and right, everything. So I talked to him and said, like, why didn't you come over? You know, like, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, they use our concert hall. Like, can I help you out? You know, just you know, why don't you you know come you know come stay with us, uh, and then why don't you do the recital? Cool. So I don't have to use Zoom number one. You know, for the, my recital, that's great. So I'm gonna do like a live stream on the May twenty first in Japan time. You know, same time that you guys have. So <clears throat> I don't know how uh, how we're gonna split. I don't think it's gonna be free because I just wanna do for my students. They are already paying me every month. And that's a little gratitude, you know, gratitude, uh, appreciation mm -hmm. I can show to them. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're not gonna. They, they don't want to hear it. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> but I'm trying to figure it out how can I do in the public as well. But you know, my for you know my my really the first you know uh, the purpose of doing like a live stream recital is with my pianist is for my students because they keep huh, me. And, and and how, how can people contact you if, if they are interested in, in meeting you as a teacher okay. online? Uh, well, you know, Facebook is always, you know, messengers. I don't like a Facebook, that you, you know, messenger is so convenient. Yeah. So like you can do that. Also like, uh, you know, if you uh, Google T-Bone School of Japan, like I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a link to Okay. okay? So like, you know, there's a contact, you know, that you can contact me, mm -hmm. of course. And uh, I'm up for everything because I you know, like everybody else, you know, before the pandemic, I never had the time. I never even had the time to reply to emails. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's a bad excuse. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
So that at the time, so that's what like, I did. Uh, I wanted to do a recital and uh, I wanted to play your piece. I just uh, started practicing. That's a very, very cool piece. Thank not you, too thank hard you. for me, you know, <laughs> but it's not too easy. So they're good motivation to practice something. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. sure that's a piece of cake for you. <laughs> it's not that complicated. So let's, go, let's do something because uh later i would like to talk about your book end up this interview with a book uh, i want to say uh, feel free to visit uh, koichiro yamamoto's social media everything is in the description if you like this kind of chat by the way we're gonna have nitsan haros uh, very soon in, in oh. the following in the following days he will be another uh, guest uh, koichiro knows him well uh, if you want to support this channel you don't have to pay anything you, you can just subscribe and that makes my heart happy at all times. You know, I wanted to talk with you about something that we shared, which is a, a, a experience at, at Juilliard. Uh, can you tell me how, how did you end up there in, 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 in the States in the very first place? Uh, Japanese prime minister sent me a note that, you know, you have a two choices. You can go to Juilliard or you come back to Japan and go to jail. So I decided to go to Juilliard school because I don't want to go to jail. Uh, so Why didn't before, you come to Spain? You couldn't have... I know, the Galicia. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got to talk to Tino because, you know, he... Oh, I was supposed to be in Spain last summer, actually. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to do my best to have you in one of the following editions here in spain we're gonna we're, you're gonna yeah. enjoy it a lot especially the food you you will uh, see you will uh, see uh, of course you know i yeah yeah i love everything <laughs> about spain man even tv show i like um <clears throat> so so like you know, before i came to the junior school uh that's what like back in the 90s a long time ago mm -hmm. i was in the budapest and the hungary budapest uh it's a little bit uh the long story but i'm gonna make uh i'm gonna try to you know, make a compact that's, you know, as a show that's possible. So when I was in high school, I was very already serious about the trombone. I want to be a good trombone player, but I never practiced. You know, somehow, like, I was talented. I just pick up the horn just to play. And, but my teacher said, like, well, come on, man, like, you, you have to, you have to practice a little bit. And I think you need a uh, better inf uh, inspirational uh, teacher. What do you mean? Like, uh, you're so easy because you never, you know, you mm -hmm. know, you my parents if i skip the trombone lessons like okay just cut the cut the crap so <laughs> here's a guest professor visiting tokyo his name is johan domus who the hell is that so dude you know like you know he's a principal of the Berlin Philharmonic. i was like okay sound like a legit all right so yeah sure no problem i play for him yeah no problem <laughs> so i visited him man and it's the greatest lesson i ever had in my life yeah i mm. mean just like Super nice, of course. And his sound, you know, Johan Doms or the Professor Doms or the former, mm -hmm. very old school, you know, just, I would say old school, just, you know, very, um, how, how can I say that? Anyway, old school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, like an old latch, you know, old latch, big bell, small bar, no valve, you know, he's holding kind of weird way to, you know, holding, you know, trombone, you know, like he wasn't using any thumb, you know, he was doing this. So he welcomed me like in his studio. He was you know, he was a visiting professor in Tokyo. So I was able to take his lesson three times and before he left. So the great lesson, basically like a singing and you know his sound is so pure. Up there, of course, you can question about you know his you know musical style, like you know slide technique, you know like a, you know articulation, ambushing, what whatever. But you know, to me, even like I was like a 16, 17, maybe I was seventeen years old. I was standing right there, like Mr. Dom's bells right here. Mm -hmm. I listen. He demonstrated for me uh, the second movement of the David. Oh my God! Almost like it felt like a, it felt like I was watching uh, the opera. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. This is so beautiful. This is, this is like a pure sound coming out of, from his bell. And I, you know, I played for him for three times. I told him like, a, kind of randomly, like a 17 year old kid, talked to the doctor or like a professor Dom. So like, mm -hmm. and I, I want, I want to come to you. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> <So> anyway, <laughs> 
So uh, my parents, class, old classmates, was good friend of uh, my professor Doms. So uh, they contacted on you know, behalf of me. Uh, basically, he said, "Yeah, come to Europe, and again, you know, come, you know, come to come to any kind of European company country, you know, and study like in the German language because I can't teach him again like, in English." That's that's what he said. All right, so that's I really, really want to you know want to study with him in the Berlin. So, uh, but before I revisit Varen, I decided to go visit my sister, you know, back then, like a sister, you know, she's a pianist, you know, Martin has played with her. Mm -hmm. uh, she was doing like a master degree in the Budapest, you know, front, Les France Academy. Mm -hmm. So I visited her, she's like, hey, you know, back then, like a flight tickets was so cheap and also like economy, like, you know, Japanese economy is so strong and I was able to, you know, travel. So I went to there, and uh, I, I, my plan was to stay with my sister for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, and, you know, take like a language course, you know, German language course you know, somewhere, and take a local lesson, to, take a trombone mm -hmm. lessons with the local teachers. So mm -hmm. I visited like a, the two local teachers, you know, just I was just curious. Hey, I'm going to German, buddy, I'm going to play for you. Something like a stupid, you know, stupid <laughs> young, you know, totally, I had no idea what's what's going on. So uh, I met Mr. Thibodeau Stan, Stan Thibodeau, and also like a Gustav Huena. So I played for them. Oh my God, it's life changing. I was like, like screw the bearing, too expensive. I don't mm -hmm. want to learn how to speak the German. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the Budapest, I like it. You know, this is good enough. So I started, you know, that's what's why I choose to, you know, uh, stay in uh, Budapest mm -hmm. as a student. And, um, and by the way, Kohichiro, uh, one, one thing, uh... For example, there are a few things that I think are in common uh, uh, from Spain and, and Japan. One of them is the tradition of wind bands. Um, and on the other hand, I, I, I wanted to ask you about, because you studied there, in, you, you went there to Budapest. Um, for example, in, in Spain in the 80s and the 90s, many people started to uh, visit France and study in, in, in Paris. So some of the students back then got a big influence from French style. Then some people started to move to America. Some of them went also to Germany. So somehow in the environment that I grew up, we had influences from everywhere. How, how was it in, in, in Japan? Like before you went to, to Budapest, how was your conception about uh, playing? Which was your favorite style, like American? How was your influence? I feel like an influence was like, you know, like, you know, I think like the based on a lot of it, the, the cultural thing, what's going on in Japan when I was you know, a kid, more like a JAMA influence, like a JAMA method over there. So less American because, you know, access of the, uh, the uh, for example, Although, you know, the old, uh, the college professors, it's up to the old college, uh, college professor, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what, you know, what is right, or what's, you know, what's the right direction to go. So they had access, or they had a more budget to invite the guest professors. And they tend to invite more like a German style, uh, you know, players or like a guest artist. So we didn't know anything about an American style uh, trombone playing. My mm -hmm. father kind of knew because, you know, he was being touched with uh, Ron Brown, you know, he was a uh, former principal of the BSO, you know, Boston Symphony Orchestra. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was more like an towards the like, American style, but I didn't have any access. Back then, like not enough like, recordings, visiting orchestra tickets is way too expensive. You know, we had like a visiting orchestra in, in Tokyo mm -hmm. uh, pretty much every week, like uh, North, North German Opera or like uh, Rundfunk. A lot of like European orchestra, especially German orchestra, like visited Japan all the time, almost like every night, you know, and you can hear mm -hmm. that. I remember like, the same night. Uh, you could hear like, uh, you know, uh, the Munich Philharmonic and the Bering, you know, Komische Oper or mm -hmm. like a uh, Rundfunk and uh, uh, Hannover, you know, Philharmonic, whatever. Uh, the three German, you know, orchestra is playing in a concert in Tokyo on the same night, something mm -hmm. like that. Like, Tokyo mm -hmm. is kind of a big city and uh, like, they have many uh, concert hall. So like I'm all the German influence, but misinterpreted to the student. For example, you know, you know, like some of the professor went to Germany for like six months or eight months, whatever. 
And they took a call, so like they took like a lessons, came back to Japan, like okay, yeah, you know, you have to be more like a German style, tongue as hard as possible. Yes. <laughs> more not, tongue, more tongue, less sound. Yeah, like <laughs> you know, no, no, only, only, only tongue, and more, more tongue. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> and end of the note, just has to be like a. Uh, uh, how to say that? Like, you know, almost like a, you know, almost like a, a book, just yes. like, a, like concrete. Yeah, well, you know, have to stop with the tongue. Wait mm. a minute, I don't think that sound good at all. So I always <laughs> had the question when I was high school. Okay, that's weird. So, <laughs> so I listened to like a Christian Lindbergh, you know, the recording. I was like, oh my god, this is really, I really loved it, and I was so hooked into it. Man, this guy's playing the music. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. this, Sound like a singer. This guy sounds like you know, Mr. Lindbergh and sound like a, like a cello. Yes. Anyway, <clears throat> so I went to the Hungary, like you know, J -J Japan, and there's pretty much no method when I was a student over there. Of course, nowadays there's so many, so many great players in Japan, like young players that can play, you know, the whole kind of crazy stuff. They can play. Uh, I'm hoping that like, they're gonna do like a, you know. Uh, they don't have to. Uh, hopefully, like they can be like a great instructors to like a younger generation. Mm -hmm. Really, really hoping for. Uh, the basically, yeah, just a no style, no method whatsoever. When I was a kid, just like, mm -hmm. you know, open the cold press to play until you uh, your chops start breathing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, like day, so. and and how did you? Sorry for interrupting you. I just uh, was gonna say, how did you? Okay, you told us how how things went, so you ended up in Budapest. <laughs> and how how, how how did you meet uh, Joe? When did you start thinking, okay, I want to move to New York and study there? I know you told me you had two options, either going back to Japan or going to America. But <laughs> did you did, ha, had you met Joe before you did the, the auditions? Uh, no, uh, actually, yes, actually, yes. Uh, the New York Philharmonic, uh, my first intention was, you know, during the course of like, uh, the, the studying in Budapest, I had a chance to go Christian Lindbergh master classes, you know, uh, twice in Sweden and uh, once in Germany. So I had a great experience. So I wanted to study with a Christian, but, you know, mm. he was taking any students. He was really, really busy. You know, he was playing a concerto, new premiere every weekend, you know, wow. you know all over the places not like just europe in asia <laughs> America, you know he was <clears throat> anyway so he was my idol you know he was he is still uh you know he just I mine just, too mine too <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's, he's amazing you know, he's a he's a g music genius and so, you know well uh, be, sorry to for interrupting you again i wanted to say something about it's a it's a good thing about uh uh alessi and also his philosophy that yeah, it really sucked me a lot when I was there. Uh, and the thing is, when, for example, when I was studying in, in, in Germany, in, in Hanover, the way, uh, I mean, the way they, 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 they approach, especially master's degree in, in, in the Hochschules in, in Germany, is you have a lesson every two weeks, but you have also plenty of time, like in between lessons. All right, um, but I remember when I was in uh, at Julia, I was thinking, you know, in my head, I was thinking, oh, maybe I will have a lesson every three weeks or something like that, because Joe will probably be traveling all all around. The and no, like some, sometimes we even had <laughs> two lessons per week, and I was like, oh my god, like yeah. you know, it was like birdie. You had to be birdie com committed. And, and also, when, when only a couple of times he, he went on tour, and that was even more uh, <laughs> demanding because the Skype lessons were also like you had to be, you had to show up and <laughs> and do things uh, the yeah. right way. Otherwise, he's really committed the teacher. You know, he's really like, uh, you know, he's really really committed. You know, of course, you know that should be. Yeah, like I know, like you know, now I remember, like you know, between the Europeans, you know, the student lives versus, like, you know, you know, students' lives in the United States. I remember that. I was that was really culture shocking to me. Yeah, because you know everybody shows up in the class. Yeah, I went over to Budapest. That's you know, whenever I feel like I just walk in and play. Hey, can I play something like that? It's really, really casual. And the Japan's a little bit like that, but you know, like every single 
system systematic you know in, in uh, the Julia special Julia school and that way it should be of course uh, so like I, you know uh, yeah new family came to the Budapest mm -hmm. and my teacher my former teacher like Augusta Horner you know uh, he set up the dinner um, uh, dinner with Mr. Lassi wow. and you know, he was across the table, and uh, Gustav was talking to like you know uh, the uh, Joe. Hey, this guy, you know, coach, or you know, he wanted to go to the United States. You know, he wanted to study with a Mick Market. How do you think about? It? You know, he said, you know, oh, that's interesting. What are you doing after the concert? You know, my concert tomorrow. So, you know, you want to play some duets? I was like, oh, sure. Enough. <laughs> I didn't practice today. No. <laughs> <laughs> also, like back then, like you know, his name just uh, became like a. At the superstar because after his uh, first album, I think I believe like a slide area just came out, and everybody had one. You know, everybody, every I listened probably like a, you know four thousand times. So here, the, you know, Mr. Alex is sitting across the table. Uh, he invited me like I do like a single casual trombone duet like a trombone trio session after the their concert. I said sure, you know, I do it. So we played like a three or four hours actually after the concert. And I said at the end of the lesson, actually, it's really funny. You mentioned Nitsan's name. Uh, yeah, Nitsan Harrods, you know, you know, he's my former one of my students, but he just, uh, he's leaving in Julia school, but he's going to be uh, you know, New York for how many goes? Oh, well, very really cool. So we have <laughs> so the next year. So you would you like to come? Would you like to come to you know, New York? I said, hell yeah, of course. That was the first. <laughs> And that was, uh, I think, a late May, and he invited me to come to the. You know, well, and you know. what, what, wasn't you nervous when you were playing these duets with him? No, I wasn't, because I was young and stupid. You know why? <laughs> I didn't know anything about it because, you know, of course, you know, I knew like you know, Mr. Alessi was like a principal trombonist with a New York D New York Philharmonic. Also, you know, just you know, he's just released a CD, sound fantastic. I was like, oh my god, this sounds so good. And of course, I grew up listening to like Leonard Bernstein's Mahler Symphony recordings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, no question about it. You know, his Jodes, you know, Mara Three Swords. Everybody yeah. inspired. You know, with Bernstein also. That that version is. That version is crazy good. So mm -hmm. of course, you know, style differences. You know, we can argue with that, but yeah, it's, that, that's how you know I listen. Uh, I grew up with listening to you know, his, you know, um, their recordings with uh, Leonard Bernstein. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I went to there. So then, and uh, the summertime came, you know, I visited New York City, played for him, you know, whole week. And he gave me like, a, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 lessons in one week. It just was very intense. The one of the things that he said, you know, I used to play like a little bit lower side, mm -hmm. uh, lower side of like a lip, like this. Yeah, like a little low, you know, I can't mm -hmm. like, Yes, so yes, yes. He said, like, oh, I, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, I, said, I was like, oh, okay. So you had to move it up a little bit? Yeah, yeah, you have to move up. So, like, you know, I changed my embouchure. You know, he asked me to change embouchure. Also, like, I ordered a new mouthpiece because I was using a um, very small mouthpiece. You know, six and a half AL maybe. And the Remington was a uh, Kong. I was applying a like, Remington mouthpiece yeah, up till mm -hmm. I was uh, 22 maybe. So, I was, I was, I was using uh, my old Kong. So he said the instruments are just fine. And uh, he tried my instrument, he liked it. And that's good news. And but he really thinks, you know, thought that the mouthpiece is too small and my ambush is too jazzy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the so he moved up and I did. I couldn't play anything. That was not fun. So I went to back in the um, um, the Budapest. And I got a new mouthpiece, a little bit the bigger mouthpiece. I uh, I was trying, you know, moving up and down anyway. So I didn't do it because you know changing embouchure is not fun. Process. No, no, no. It's a it's it's yeah. a very risky move. Yeah, risky move. Also, like if you don't know anything about it, you know, if you're young, you know, patient. Yeah, it's not fun at all. So I didn't do it. So and he said, all right, so I'll come back. Come back in uh, November. I was like, you know, uh, the uh, jury had audition, entrance audition is uh, January. So just uh, just see you in November. So I went to back, you know, of course I didn't change it on this year. Uh, he was <laughs> pissed off. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, he was very upset. He was like, you know, uh, no new embouchure, no juryard. You know, he was very clear, you know, because I didn't speak any English. Like, no new embouchure, no juryard, out. I was like, oh, shit. 
shoot. So this no is, lesson. There was no lesson. The, you know, he he still gave me a lesson, uh, but you know, I couldn't play because I was so nervous because I was you know, so upset. You know, like you know, you see, you know, if you if you're having to change like your embouchure like you know back in July, this is like a piece of cake or something like that. I was like, okay, this is no good. All right, I give you three days, change your embouchure. So see you in the three days. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh my, my god. god, are you nuts? <laughs> so, so I moved. So you know, he told me how to move. You know, he took a pictures. So uh, he, he gave me a good exercise, you know, you know, what is the first step you know, when you change the ambush? Don't play this, you know, play this, you know, use this, blah, blah, blah. So basically I moved it. So, um, so three days later, he, the lesson started and he asked me to play the Bordoni and he was, he didn't say anything, you know, I still remember that was number six and all right. So can you, can you read the tenor crap? Yeah, of course. You know, yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, how about our excerpts? Can you play Mario three? Yeah. It's like, Oh, I just changed my ambition three days ago. That's okay. I can try. Then I can play Borel. That's uh, oh shoot. Are you outside? <laughs> Three days ago, are you are you are you going crazy? So I did it. So you know because I was too nervous to think about it. But okay, just a user error. But one thing, one great benefit, uh, the change in ambusher because my chops are still fresh, and all the bad habits almost disappear right away. Of course, you know changing your ambusher, the the biggest change was low register because you know you didn't have any support because ambusher is supported by eight to twelve different small muscles, right? Everything goes to center towards to your lips. So, uh, you know when I when I do, you know I can you know anybody can play different pressures, right? Like, like Jake was used to say, mm-hmm. the biggest challenge is register. I want you know, especially to me, it's a low register. I couldn't mm-hmm. play. Because I didn't have enough uh, muscle. Was you know my muscle, all the movement, facial muscle was like a too weak, non you know premature. Also, like it wasn't developed enough. So, so I guess that took took time to to develop, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that was November. I feel much better, actually. Yeah, like, you know, after three days after, like, I changed my ambition, like, you know, I was still mm-hmm. be able to take, like, uh, Mr. Alessi's lesson. And then January came, I took an audition for the junior school. Uh, he accepted the three do, do you remember? Do you remember what you played at that audition? Oh, I remember. I remember. What is the piece? Youngin. Yeah, Youngin. And I think that I played like five different excerpts. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, that was my audition piece. Thank God I, that mm-hmm. wasn't like a David because mm-hmm. back then I wasn't able to play the David because you know, I just changed the ambusher. So I changed my ambusher in November. You know, Julia the audition was end of the January. That was quite a January or like a February. I can't remember. Maybe that time mm-hmm. period during the winter time. Yeah, that was. Uh, that's what's kind of scary, but I got in a Juilliard and I studied with Joe for two years. Uh, first year. Oh, okay, Koichiro, one second. Uh, I want to say somebody asked, for example, uh, Pior Borski. Uh, he asked, Ricardo asked Cole about how Mr. Alessi influenced his sound. I have to say many people is asking like, hello from Japan, like Cabatina and Dantino, he's saying hello from Japan. Uh, people, oh, hello, hello, hello from Texas. Uh, people is saying, Texas. hello, Andres <laughs> Leon is, uh, is just saying bravo to you. So let, for those of you who uh, don't know uh, Kohichiro, he's principal trombone in, in, in Seattle. But now we're going to listen a very short video playing, uh, where, where Kohichiro is playing Song for Lota, with, oh. which is a beautiful piece and he plays it amazing. Okay, so... I, I rec- during this minute that we are going to be listen, uh, listening and watching this video, feel free to subscribe, to click, click the bell icon uh, so you support this kind of uh, live chats. Okay, let, let's listen to it.
Uh, now we are back with uh, Koichiro. Did you like his playing? I think, you know, we have a, a, a comment in the chat, Dylan Lee. What did you do to develop your sound? Koichiro has one of the fullest uh, sounds I've ever heard. I think I agree with that. And, and, the, and I can link this question with a previous question that was before. Ricardo, oh. please ask Ko about how Mr. Alessi influenced his sound. Maybe you can just do a, a mix between these these two uh, questions. I'm sorry, just changing a lot of lighting. Uh, well, thank you so much for like what a wonderful. Yeah, it's very kind of flattered to hear like somebody you know some people like my sound uh, because uh, I I'm sure like a mountain doesn't like my sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like a, I don't know. I think the biggest uh, biggest thing is. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, give me one sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Okay. So my Life. camera was kind of like acting weird. So I'm sorry <laughs> about that. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Uh, well, thank you so much. Like, some such a flatter. Like, some, you know, some. There's still some people liking my sound. That's awesome. Um, yeah, of course, like uh, in answering your question, I try to pull full as much as I can. Uh, I like the wide sound. I like, I, it's, it's in my head. It's in my head. I can't change it. Yeah. And also, like, uh, the biggest influence, of course, you know, Mr. Alessi's sound, because he used to you know, play sound like a King Kong back in the 90s. <laughs> I went to, and seriously, like, when I was a junior, I went to pretty much every single concert that can Joe play. So like a New York Philharmonic, of course, you know, tickets is very expensive getting on the New York Philharmonic. Basically, when I was a student, I went to downstairs and uh, during the intermission. So like uh, people leave, uh, like uh, some of the rich people, because like, they came to like, the concert just for the like, soloist or what, like, they leave after the first thing uh, during the intermission. So I just uh, stand in there, like lobby, like every uh, Fisher Hall, the David Griffin Hall. So I ask people, like, can I have your ticket stub? You know, like, mm -hmm. kind of people look at me like, who the hell is this guy? You know, like, you know, this, I <laughs> just, no, get, get away, you know. <laughs> of course, again, I had no money when I was a junior because, you know, living in yeah. New York City. Is so expensive. I, I used like, to, we, we used to do the same, like go after the the intermission mm -hmm. and ask for the, <laughs> yeah, the, the tickets. Yeah, like, I'm going. So, like, I, someday, like, I decided to you know, just uh, be honest. So, like, listen, I would like to hear, like, a concert. I'm the junior student. You know, my teacher plays, you know, uh, trombone. He's a principal trombone. And uh, he's playing a model as five concert. I, I can't miss it. I, I really, you know, that's in, I put in a whole my life and my life saving and my parents are like I paying every single penny to come to New York City to go to Julia. Like, please, you know, please give me a ticket. So I was like, oh, shoot. And, you know, people starting. I remember one time that people just said, oh, um, okay, how, how many you need? I just need one to take us up. And the people starting gathering, oh, I have a ticket to take it. Like, are you going to Julia? Yeah, good luck. You know, something like that. That's, mm. that's true New Yorkers. I love mm. New York. So that's what I was doing, and I listened to you know his sound, massive, massive sound. Back then, like you know, he sounds huge. You know, like now, right now, like you know, he still sounds strong and huge. But I still remember uh, just in my head, and I wanted to sound like that. Also, uh, I spent not almost ten years to being uh, second trombone at the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra. Uh, it's a little bit different because uh, I was sitting. I was sitting in like in the next to like a Mr. Steven Norell. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, like, he sounded like a tuba, huge. So I have to be like a uh, bridge of the section, pretty much between the strings, the winds, orchestra, and the bottom of the brass section. So my low chops had to be be ready all the time. Had to be. So like also like uh, I just like it. Uh, I just want to sound like it. Sometimes like you know the cello, the open strings. Uh, Sometimes I want to sound like uh, in the bassoon. So uh, also like uh, I spent like a lot of time like in the playing the second trombone. I think like that's also I remember like a Kurt Moll, the K U R T Moll L O L L. Kurt Moll mm -hmm. used to come to the Metropolitan Opera mm -hmm. a lot. Oh my God, like his you know, voice is unrealistic. I mean, you know, like speaking of magic flute, we did like a magic flute. You know, that's a story. 
you know, and he goes, ho, ho, ho. he's singing very soft, <laughs> but whole opera house is starting shaking because, you know, resonance. And his voice had so clear, so much depth and the wefts as well. I still remember, oh my God, I gotta do something about this because I'm sitting in like the best opera house in the world and here's, you know, the legend Kurt Moore and he's proving himself like every single night, you know, just like, you know, he was uh, James Morris as well. The like Domingo was just, you know, he was killing every night. And that their voice, has, it's not like a projection, just like an you know, overtone. Mm -hmm. Holes, you know, like, oh, feels like whole opera house is shaking. They're not screaming. Don't get me wrong. And, and, and you know, I think that the, the most difficult thing about, and I think this can be a good thing to, to link that to what you're saying with this singer, is that sometimes people try to get a very big sound, but it's unfocused. So how do you combine these two elements? Like have a very big sound like this uh, singer or like you do, but also have it packed. So it projects and it goes forward and it doesn't go to your bottle of wine before <laughs> behind you. Oh, this was a very good one, actually. Ah. Somebody gave it. was so expensive. That's my retirement. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's got like a camera, so like it's probably just like a $250 wine. So anyway. Really? Okay, so, okay. Yeah, I don't drink anymore during like the, the pandemic because I get more depressed. So I would start with the respect the low register because uh, you have to practice low register. And the low register, you can't just push it. You know what I mean? So like a high register, you can use a compression. You can, you know, tilt up a little bit, you know, small, faster air. The slower air is very, very difficult. Because, you know, slow air means, like, if you go, like, in forte at a high register, <laughs> like this. <laughs> Sometimes you use, some people use, like, a diaphragm. Mm -hmm. But a lower mm -hmm. register, you have to have a more patient. <gasps> That's harder and boring, right? And also, how much, I don't know, just, you know, low register, you know, uh, my mouthpiece. So you would say that the low register is kind of the, the key, yes. right? I always started with my day with a low register, like, you know, uh, really low, like... Uh... <laughs> I think those last notes never sounded on my trombone. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the mu I think the trombone, trombone is all about vibration on the air and the sound mm -hmm. of, of course, in the phrasing, we can talk about set of our music, a tone quality, French style, German style, Japan, Japanese style, or Seattle style, well, whatever. Spanish so, style. Spanish style, the whole, <laughs> yeah, you know, Galicia, Galicia beer. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tonight you know uh so that you just uh just let it go just like an air and air and the vibration start with there and also like you know, listen to the opera i, I know I, I sound like a stupid like a, you know trombone teacher but you listening is very very important you're listening you know, from like, like a young boss field like just, you have to have some kind of examples in your head you know Sound I, I love Ian Bus I, I know I, I love Ian Bosfield's uh, teachings uh, and all these videos where he summarizes like very complex uh, uh, issues with very simple ideas. Like for example, what you were saying about low register, um, you cannot, um, how, how would you say, you cannot press the air going to the low register, you, you just kind of let it go. You, you take everything and then the resistance of the trombones, we, we do the rest. You, ha you don't have to do anything right. extra, right? 
Right, exactly. So because you can look at a low register, you can't jam in the air. Like, you know, you can't, you know, trombone, you know, it's just, you know, big instruments, but like the hole is very small. If you try to do like this, you miss it. You know, you have to go like a big, slow air, you know, like when you play the low register. You know, I start from there to develop your sound. Also, listen to like an Abbey Green, listen to like Ian Boss, who the most pure sound. Listen to, you know, uh, Arnold Jacobs, you know. And anyway, so that any kind of instrument, you have to have like an influential the sound in you know, your head. Mm -hmm. Also, you have to have all your voice. Yeah, this is how I play, you know, uh, you know, you can, yeah, you can, you can argue with that, but you know, like the, the most of, you know, word you don't want to hear it. So like, no point, that's pointless. Mm. So of course we play trombone. <clears throat> it's like a, a lot of like a technical, you know, uh, impact also like essentially like you have to talk about, you know, when I play the low register, I try to pull off, you know, almost like a somebody's, of course, two things. Or like you know, if you go like uh, the, the 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 large, even like an airport, like at two in the morning, you know, like a professional guy cleaning the floor, right? Mm -hmm. And commercial vacuum, almost like you know, feel like I'm putting like a you know professional vacuum machine and then into the bell. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, trying to pull off, trying to mm -hmm. pull off. Of course, you have to have like a great, great, great posture. Your instruments, uh, you never go into the instrument. You always bring your instrument to your face. Because you know we pay for this, we pay the money for this. You know yes. why the hell do we have to go this way? Mm -hmm. You know I pay. Just you know this is my pro. You know this is my my instruments. You should come to me. You know, I'm not gonna go to you. So kind of um, like when you eat. You know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I pay <laughs> for this. Yeah, I cook for this, and also like you know the the key for me this idea really helps. Like when I play the like, low register, just a pull off, the pressure off because you need to let your lips go especially like a low register you low register, you need mm. yeah this like a fat japanese lips you know mm. like a lower a lower lip you need more involved so you have to give it like a freedom to your low ribs like uh... <laughs> When I go to high register, you know, same idea, just to give a more freedom to the upper lips because, you know, high register, uh, the higher lips, upper lips is more involved. Mm -hmm. So I tilt a little bit, try to pull off so that I can, uh, I can, uh, my air can go faster, you know, exactly. and when I go like a low register, my air goes, you know, like a slower, but, uh, but, you know, more depth, mm -hmm. more you wide. Know? So, somebody's asking which size of mousepiece is that for ye? Or... I don't know actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just like, whatever, like you know, you know, just, I find it, I like it. But I, I think twenty six point seven, something like that. I think a three RAM, but I don't like. I really don't like like a large cup, like a four G. I can't do it. Because you know I'm too lazy to use applications, <laughs> and I need a little bit like a support, like you know that does I can you know I can you know I can lean something onto it. That means you know my cup size is around five G, but the rim is kind of big because I tell you can see you know my my lips is very big, mm -hmm. so a lot of red meat I have to put on. Okay, mm -hmm. so and also. During the pandemic, I'm starting to do the more like online teach. I have to convince it, you know, students, all right? Uh, to, you know, in the live, you know, face to face. Here is like I like the sound. You know, can you can you you know can you think about a more you know this kind of sound? You know, you can demonstrate. But you know, even though you know it's an expensive microphone, using a Zoom, it's very very challenging. So um, I want my students to feel better. So, because I had to go through the, some like, uh, you know, like injury and also like a really, really dark time. Yes, you, but by the way, you, you sent me a, a couple of pictures and I got shocked. Yeah, I, like, yeah, you, just, so you had a surgery, lip surgery. Yeah, what happened? Like, it's like, uh, I, I'm going to get into like uh, later, uh, a little bit later. Uh, and, uh, so, 
the, in order to have, I think, I think, you know, well, thank you so much. Well, like now, you know, look at somebody like uh, giving me like a great comments about my sound. I really, really flatters. I think the resonance and also the focus, like you said, like a Ricardo. Yeah. Uh, everything comes out from here as well, because, you know, if you tie it up here, you know, like upper lip, like in your lips, you know, when you play, you know, you can still play. For example, I don't know. You know, you can do that like this. <laughs> yeah, you can still do it, but it's not, you know, you don't want to use that kind of sound. You know, just, you know, it's kind of party trick. Hey, happy birthday. Ah, like this, you know, it's fun. But, you know, you want to play, you know, something like a... something like a beautiful beautiful melody like that's why i love talking to composer too we yes. can talk about music <laughs> yes do you use like a slide like that what kind of oil you use i don't know i don't have oil i have to ask the trumpet player to you know <laughs> that i'm using the oil so you have to relax here you know almost like yeah there's a little tiny fishes swimming around inside of my mouthpiece otherwise you can do that, but if like a one tiny, tiny object landed on my lips, I can't play. You see, everything stop. No vibration means no trombone sound, all right? So you have to first thing, you just sort of relax here, relax. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to have a like, tight, you know, you have to have like a, you know, pucker, you know, like a Mr. Alessi, you always mm -hmm. talk about it, you can keep it. But here has to be, you know, supple. Um, um, not tense. Mr. Not yeah. tense. Not tense. Just like a supple, almost like a ballet dancer. I like the. Uh, anyway, so yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, w I was gonna uh, ask you about your orchestral auditions. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit um, how how did you approach the Seattle audition and the Metropolitan Opera audition? And what did you do different in, in between them? Or you just basically follow just, the same strategies? I just practice. I just practice. <laughs> practice. That's a good advice for uh, people. By the way, we have a, we have Sebastián Cifuentes. He's saying, hi, Cole. Miss you, man. Hi, Sebastián. How are you doing? <laughs> so can you tell us, did you, did you win the Metropolitan Audition while you were studying at Julia or it was after yeah, it was, i was still in a school <laughs> i was oh, and rock day of my life yeah i still remember like yesterday my mom cried over the phone like in a 50 minutes straight yeah that's one of the happiest uh, moment for yamamoto family actually so i was <laughs> i wasn't expecting win at all yeah it's like, you know, my goal was like, okay go to the final so that i don't have to make tape you know, you know, audition in the United States. If you're just a student, you have to make a tape. Just a realistic, yeah. Just you know, just a rule. I know that the most orchestras are following that rule. If you're a student, you're a professor. Sorry, you have to make a tape. Yeah, yes. So, you know it, you're Ricardo. Mm -hmm. So it's like a very, very tough to get a job in the United States. And uh, of course, we can talk about it. Yeah, I want to be like a soloist. All right, who's gonna pay the rent? You know, who's gonna pay for the insurance and the life? The insurance? government. No, I'm yeah, kidding. I'm kidding. Exactly. <laughs> Everything. Don't worry. You just play the trombone. Nope. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't fly like that. Yes. Yeah. We can talk about a little, a little bit of like, you know, uh, the orchestra players' life difference between Spain, Japan, like in the, uh, in the United States. But on uh, the first thing, I just practice. I just practice my ass off. One of the Juilliard. I don't know. I stayed in school, so like a morning time. Let me put it this way. On my first year, Mr. James Markey was my classmate. Mm -hmm. I showed up my ass. I showed up my skin, like my butt, like an eight, 
30 or something like that, you know, he was already practicing, I don't know, maybe two hours. So he was very, very consistent. You know, Jim has been always, always consistent, four hours a day. Every day he practiced four hours. I don't think that's included like in a warm up session, but four hours every day. After four cool. hours, all right, that's enough. Just getting up. And the quality of the practice is legit. He's very, very phenomenal. You know, like an outstanding. So it's mm-hmm. very, very consistent. On uh, me, a little bit inconsistent, but I spend a lot of hours at the Julio school, like a third floor. You remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it the- was was it three or four and three or I, I don't remember. It was next to the lockers, right? Those yeah. Yeah. those rooms. Yeah, because like, you know, three thirteen was like a base studio. Just I liked it, and you know, I warmed up from there. I could then find you know third floor like, dance you know dance uh, studios. If you come to the school, probably you can recognize <clears throat> uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, third floor is a full like, dance studios. If everybody wanted you know practice and the, the best acoustic in the world. It's a large, high ceilings, wooden floor. Oh my god, I loved it. So uh, in order to get that room, you have to. You know, you have to be in the room. So uh, you have to be like a first or like you have to wait in the hallway. Once I got into that room, I never, never left. So during the summertime, I remember uh, I got into Julio school because, you know, sometimes like summer, summertime, summertime in the Julio is a little bit tricky. Uh, school don't, don't let you in the building because they rent out for the other institution. Mm-hmm. So I have to be, I have to be like a before uh, the security guy showed up. So basically, like I went to loading dock on the 6.30 in the morning. I brought the lunch, you know, water and the tape recorder and everything. So <laughs> with everything in a backpack and it was trombone case, I was just almost like, I don't know. I mean, just... Uh, <laughs> It's Bond movie, just like, like the sneaking in. Yeah. So once I got into the you know dance studio, especially during the summertime, I never left. So like you know, every time I have to go like the bathroom, I have to be very very careful. If like a guard or like a security finds out, I'm gonna be in big trouble. That means I have mm-hmm. to leave the school. I, I, I didn't know about that. I didn't know that you could then use the facilities uh, of Julia during the summer. That, that, that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's kind of like that's, that's, yeah, probably probably gonna get received a letter from like a dean yes <laughs> maybe western's gonna send me like a you know bill or something like that anyway so i never left i never left like you know 6 30 i just, i was very tired but that i had to do so like i brought my lunch and uh practice 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 of course some people yeah don't practice like 25 minutes a day come on reality was i had to practice so, but one thing I did very, very smart before the Metropolitan Opera audition, because I was recording all the time. So, for example, La Gazzaradra, for example, like a uh, Cabaret, Rustican, at Pariach, whatever, Otero. So, those technical ones, I didn't spend much time. I spent a lot of time like the right of Valkyrie, because the mm-hmm. right of Valkyrie, I never got right. And also the low and green was easy for me, but the some mana three was having trouble because of musical phrase, etc. So I was practicing, practicing, practicing with a tape recorder. So I think I was, you know, I was doing the right thing. Otherwise, I wouldn't be ended up here. Well, like, you know, I, I wasn't able to get in a job in a New York uh, in a Metro Point Opera. What I was doing is just gonna play one excerpts, very, very focused, and record myself. So go to the table or like a music stand or the microphone. I listen to the recording and with a speak. And I use a headset uh, because uh, Miss Alessi said, like, don't use a headset. You know, it sounds too good. Or like you're wasting time. You know, when I go to get back and forth as quick as possible. But I didn't like that the sound. I just didn't like it. I just use a headset in you know, a headphone. Listen to the, you know, excerpts. I was counting like this. Oh, I'll do it here. Ah, relate. I was rushing. All right, try again. Really focused. Really, really focused. Because I, I I wanted to get down. So like I recorded again, again, like the same mistake, same mistake, same mistake. Like, okay, another spot is out of tune, bad sound, whatever. So I was doing like a whole day, you know, very much whole summer, you know, whole, you know, before the audition. Mm. I'm, 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 you- so I'm sorry, before the audition, did you do like mock auditions without stopping? Just playing everything all the entire list through um yeah before you get that you know like a, that period you know that's like a step uh, like, like a, uh, the level 
you have to sound good because you know the back then you know still is and probably like you know unless the studio is very strong everybody's winning job everybody had the ears everybody had the chops everybody's a great player and their 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 comments are very very accurate also like it's not sugar coated so it's very direct Co, you played out to 10 no you're late you know something like that yeah. uh before I played for somebody, I always wanted to you know, record myself to practice as much as I can. I'm telling you, you know, like before, I was very, very nervous before the semifinal, like a Metropolitan Opera audition, because I thought I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I thought I wasn't, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't deserve, deserve this. You know, how the, how the heck are I going to compete with those guys? So also like a, the main thing is now wasn't competition, competition against myself because, dude, I'm not ready. I'm still playing the super auto tune like the right of Arcure, you know, off the rhythm. I, I can't, you know, no way I can advance to the final. Mm -hmm. So, but before the audition, like a day, two days before the, you know, semifinal and I played for uh, Mr. Alessi, I went to like, uh, you know, his house. And that was really the first time or the last time he didn't play his trombone in my lesson. That was kind of good because he said, I think you're ready to go. Uh, but I totally disagree because I listened to the you know uh, recording from our lesson. I was like, man, it's so hard to tune. It's not, the rhythm is not right. So I really, really didn't want to go. I was advanced to the semifinal. I didn't know they do the semifinal, the final round at the same time and same day. I was just practicing between the semi-final and the final, and I was practicing. Actually, like a you know, personal manager back then, like in the med set, you know, came to me. Listen, kid, you can't practice. You have to play the final in the 15 minutes. You know, just stop practicing. People just you know, worry about it. You know, just go nuts and practicing like a practicing. You know, you are about to play in the final round of Metropolitan Opera. So I was. So getting a job wasn't my really the goal back then at that moment i just didn't want to embarrass myself i didn't want to disrespect the committees because i'm playing the solo to tune <laughs> i'm playing the soul out of prison and i'm playing i'm i'm, I'm you know i'm playing like a right the right of arcure for the met you know people for the metal Port opera so like i wasn't ready so 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 after you won you said no i don't deserve it like <laughs> I, I, I give up <laughs> yeah. so I remember that moment, also like a moment, you know, a day before or like a couple of days before, like, you know, final round or the Seattle Symphony audition. I was like, oh, my God, I wish I had more time. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm wrong. I'm not ready. I know I can play trombone. I know I've been working in the professional industry, but I'm not ready. So I building up the anxiety all the time. Yeah, I, I'm quite honest because... So you just have to practice. Yeah, don't be a smart ass, you know, because, oh, some people say they're going to practice 25 minutes to take a break. Yeah, of course, a break is important. You know, hurting yourself is, you know, that's a stupid, but you have to practice. You have to talk to your body, of course, mm -hmm. and you have to be a good trombone player first, you know. You know, if you started, you know, the, uh, playing a trombone like uh, three weeks ago, yeah, I want to apply for the... Uh, your principal job opening for the London Symphony. I don't think you're going to win. You know, that's a reality. You have mm -hmm. to be a good, good trombone player. You have to do like a lot of research, which is the listening. You know, uh, you are... And example, listen, listening to yourself as well. <laughs> yeah, listen to yourself too, because, you know, you have to record yourself. That's the best, best teacher you can get is a recording mm -hmm. machine. Also, you can use a lawyer microphone, AKG. You can talk about you know gears later, <laughs> but mm -hmm. use a phone. You know, use a phone. Well, like you know, use a tape recorder. Mm -hmm. Use a speaker song. Uh, that no filter. You know, you only need the like, information, your resume, and the intonation. Right? You have to get mm -hmm. it right away. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I record myself. You know, and I listen to it. And now what? Uh, the process is not that easy. It takes time, time, time. Of course, the intonations coming from like your airstream, like a vibration technique whatsoever. You have to be the, you know, you have to be a good trombone player first. You know, do the Arvin, good on Bordoni, using technical studies, whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then you have to have to have like a great tone concept. Then you know, practice, practice. And yeah. and Coitero, Coitero. Well, sorry, just finish. I'm, I'm... Yeah, go ahead. I'm a, I'm a very bad interviewer. I'm interrupting the, the entire time, but I'm just 
excited sometimes. I just want to ask things. So uh, I'm, I'm curious about after the audition, uh, you had to go back to your private lessons with uh, Joe, low brass class. How was the, the, the vibe in the, in, in the class after you won that? Like, like man, like I, you, you, you were the boss at, the, at, the, at that moment. Like, um, what, what was, uh, was still, did you still feel that pressure at every class or you felt kind of a relief uh, after you, you won the, the job? It's really, you know, it's, it's really funny. It's nice to ask me, like, I totally forgot about this, huh? Because after the audition, audition was end of the June and the school was already over. So uh -huh. the next morning I had to go to like, a national repertoire orchestra, you know, Cora just you know just student you know festival i really really didn't want to kill and i didn't tell anybody but like, the conductor back then like a you know music director all right cool look at you playing a second you know, okay that's fine yeah what do you mean fine i thought you wanted to play principal you know the my festival no i'm fine just i just won the second trombone job in the, the metropolitan opera i would like to know i'd like to learn how to <laughs> Oh my god, the conductor was so pissed off. I mean, okay, so I'm sorry, I like, was so upset because, you know, yeah, because you know, he wanted to humiliate me because, you know, I didn't see. And he him. got humiliated back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, uh, yeah, anyway, so that's, that's a great moment. <laughs> no, I, I don't, you know, I kind of regret I did that. But it's the truth. I wanted to learn how to play the second, you know, like a more, yeah, <laughs> uh, more like a higher level of quality. So after I went to back to school, I didn't, I wanted to go to the back to school, but Joe said, no, like, are you kidding? Hey, you're done. You got a job. You know, out of my studio. I was like, oh, but I want to finish the school. I didn't finish school. I have like, I still have like two more years left. I didn't finish. So I think he said, no, are you kidding? No, you can't come back. But I want to, I want to, I want to finish the school. Then you have to pay the tuition. Why? Because I thought I got a scholarship. Are you kidding? You're making <laughs> Oh, shoot. I didn't think about it. No. <laughs> so because they gave me a great scholarship, mm -hmm. uh, even though like uh, back then, like it's still cheaper than nowadays, but uh, still it's money's money, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a big money for me. So uh, so I decided to leave of absence from the junior school. And mm -hmm. I went to like a dean's office, you know, dean already knew, you know, back then, like a uh, uh, former dean of the like, Julia school, he, he liked me because he used to play the bassoon. He always liked me. He was always be nice to me. So I, I explained to him, like, yeah, I don't want to just quit because, you know, it took me forever to get into Julia mm -hmm. school, you know, but, but you got it on the mat. It's, I know, but I'm, I'm still, you know, leave the option open. So, okay, I understand. So you can take a, you can take a leave of absence from the Julia school. And, and in December, I got a letter from the Julia school. If you wish to come back, Mr. Yamamoto, you have to re-audition to the Julia school. I was like, uh, I don't think so. Re-audition <laughs> after winning the Metropolitan Opera. Okay. But at the same time, I was like, there's no way I can win. <laughs> <laughs> no way! Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the whole process again in front of Joe and Warren Deck and uh, and uh, all the you know Phil Smith and uh, no way! I don't <laughs> no. play any notes because I don't have time to practice because I'm sitting my ass in like an opera house all the time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, before we go to the last section of this podcast, because I I already have to say thank you very much. We've been here more than two hours. Um, you've been so patient. Uh, we are going to just talk about uh, the Seattle audition. Uh, also, if you want, you, you can share with us uh, what you told me about the injury. We are, um, in fact, we ha I have a guest here in, the, in this channel, uh, but that, that podcast one was in, in Spanish. Uh, it was about a guy who was playing in the Luton Festival Orchestra and he was having an amazing career and suddenly he got also injured and and it was uh is da daniel perpignan that's his oh, okay. Danny perpignan and so we're gonna listen to a short uh, video of <laughs> koichiro yamamoto playing what is the harvest uh, concerto oh my god i missed the last f by the way <laughs> no 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 but i heard i heard it before it's awesome. Let's listen to it a little bit and then let's go to the final part of this super podcast with Koi Tiro.
So we are back um, uh, and we are going to approach this last section. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Coachella, about Seattle because I guess it had to be, or maybe not, but maybe it had to be a, comp a difficult uh, situation at the moment, moment you had to choose between Seattle and uh, Metropolitan. Did you have to think too much or you had already a clear idea about it? I had a very clear idea, you know, I wanted it, uh, I wanted to be a some, uh, um, something else, you know, mm -hmm. rather than like just, a, you know, just sitting um, second trombone. Mm -hmm. uh, second trombone is great, you know, I have, you know, that's really hard to leave Metropolitan Opera because, you know, I don't have it with me right now, but, you know, the, I was also uh, the bass trumpet and my requirement is the bass trumpet. Uh, somebody gave me the old bass trumpet, original part of the metal port mm. it used to be like the last 50 or 60 years. It says like in a Von Kallian, like a 1965 Leinsdorf. They gave me like a bass trumpet part because uh, I love playing a bass trumpet over there. I miss that. Almost like uh, my, you know, friends, uh, you know, or colleagues at the Met, Met Orchestra is a fantastic orchestra, you know. And um, every night you hear that mm. the best singers in the world right there, mm. you know, in the Met has an open pit. Uh, we're not underneath of the stage. We're front of the stage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the experience was like, fantastic. I, of course, people said, like, oh, yeah, the ring, opera, Wagner. No, of course, I, I miss the ring. But I miss like, um, uh, uh, Pariachi, Otero, you know, Faustoff, mm -hmm. Faust, those music. I, I still miss it. I still miss it. I mean, like you being like uh, on the football stadium, you know, because you know uh, the show ends up and uh, people applaud, you know, standing ovation. It's crazy. So much energy coming from the audience. Mm -hmm. I miss that so much. Of course, again, you know, the audiences in Seattle is very, very warm, and mm -hmm. they love music. And they really appreciate the music. Totally different. I just want to be like a principal trombone. I wanted to give it a shot, of course. Of course. Uh, before that, like right before like Seattle, uh, and I got a off job offer from the NHK Symphony in Tokyo, and but wasn't right fit. Of course, you know, I, I stayed there like eleven months. I played with the orchestra of Mala Symphony, the Shostakovich, whatever. It's great living in Tokyo. Uh, There's so much fun. I was young, but I really, really wanted to come back to here. And the Seattle is one of the cities I really, really wanted to live because I, mm -hmm. I like the West Coast. West Coast is I like the mm -hmm. you know life you know, close to the ocean, close to still close to like Japan, my homeland. Also, you know, there's a mountain. I can go ski. You know, I can have like a lifestyle. I can live not mm -hmm. you know like a tiny, tiny apartment yes. and just like a healthy. You know, I just want to have you know the, this kind of lifestyle for my family as well. So Tokyo option was really, really tempting. Also, like a leaving a metropolitan opera was like a big challenge. But I'm, I'm very, very happy. I'm very, very happy with the Seattle because you know, you know, if you come to see, oh, if you have a chance to come to Seattle, mm -hmm. you see it's a beautiful town. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. I'll try it. <laughs> I'll try for sure. At the moment, and all these things. Um, okay, I don't think he can. <laughs> can you can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, we have uh, somebody, Sebastian Cifuentes. He's he, he's been here for a for a long time. He's saying his recordings with the Met on bass trumpet are amazing. So thank you, Sebastian. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. And so you know, apparently uh, somebody might think that your entire life was, as we say in in Spain. Camino de Rosas, uh, a path of flowers, like everything when the, 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 the way it, 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 it had to go, like you want to auditions, like everything is perfect, you were teaching. So can you tell us a little bit what happened at that moment that, that you oh. had that injury? I, I didn't know about it. You sent me pictures now and it looks like a serious thing. A, a yeah, serious thing. You, can, you can share it too with everybody, actually. Yeah, mm. you know. If to, because it's just a reality, you know, if you play in trombone too much. Yeah. Mm. Almost like a car accident. Yeah. So, you know, you can share the picture if you want to. I don't care. So, so mm. um, back in the 2012, uh, 2011, 2012, I was very busy. I was doing a recording, you know, so, you know, I joined the Central City Brass Quintet, which is one of the most established brass quintet in this country. 
and I was, yeah, I was getting calls from Taiwan, China, you know, everywhere. And also, like, I went to Spain as well. Thank you, mm -hmm. the Galicia. Yeah, <laughs> yes. So I was doing way too much. I was teaching like eight hours a day straight, plus a practicing and a plus a, like a rehearsal with a pianist. And one week, I played three different, con uh, four different concertos in the four different cities in Asia. So oh. that's what's stupid. A night before I was playing a Mala 2 here on the Seattle, I took like a red eye flight to Asia on 2 really? a.m. flight and get off the airplane straight to the rehearsal. And the next day was a concert. And then the, uh, I did a rehearsal with a pianist and I played a Creston, a master class. And the same night I was playing the John Mackey concerto. Uh, next day was uh, two concertos, you know, Grendel, and I think I think I played a croaky. Then I think we went to back a different city uh, and I played the two concertos. Seven, 17 days. Also, like uh, the trombone camp started, teaching eight hours, you know, play like a stupid. So mm. I got a chaos inside my mouth, you know, you know because in this teeth you know, you know, hitting against my lips. Yeah, felt real strange. And I started losing a lot of vibration, you know, hard to play the tuning B flat, you know, uh, and wow. during the rehearsal, I feel Th something. That's, it's exactly the same as this Spanish guy, uh, Danny Perpignan, told, told us in one of these podcasts. It sounds yeah. very scary, like to me, actually. It's like chaos. You know, chaos means it's like a yes. lot of like, you know, like, you know, the, you, you know, skin against something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got that inside my mouth. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Just during the summertime. All right. I took two weeks off, didn't go away. And then like a symphony started in September. And about halfway through, I had to play Shostakovich 15 solo on the November and the middle of the note and I played a solo but I felt terrible. Every single note I have to basically I have to do this. You know ever since then, you know, the discomfort stays there. So every single note I'm still doing a little bit, you know, because it's a terrible bad habit. But I got like a giant cows inside my mouth. So, you know, I removed it, you know, because mm. it's a huge so I had to do this, you know, before I play, like this. Like that. You know, every single note I had to do it. Just I still do it because you know, someone in my brain still remembers that like a mm -hmm. sensation, a PSDT event. So then I started losing my tongue, you know, you know day by day. So my tongue gets like a brighter, skinnier, and a smaller, dull, um, mm -hmm. so many happen but you know i took time off problem kind of went away but you know except this one still bugged me uh the hindering hindering like my vibration mm -hmm. uh, especially this uh special like uh, uh what note was that especially like i had to use the three different ambusher back then because you know because it hurts so much uh the, for example yeah mm. Instead of so, I had to use a different ambusher wow. uh, in order to play just like a two one octaves. That's what's mm -hmm. nightmare. So, and I found a doctor in Georgia. I met probably like a twenty different doctors, and I found a doctor in Georgia. Oh, that's an easy fix. I've done it before. You know, mm -hmm. just you know, do like a quick, quick surgery. That was the mm -hmm. end of the 2012. And ever since then, just one quick surgery. That's only took like a fifteen or twenty minutes. And okay? and, it, and it, 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 it worked. It worked. Yes, I totally regret. I rather oh. you know I should have not have like a surgery. I should have just changed my embouchure. Just moved. Uh, so basically, that day I lost everything. Two thousand thirteen, I couldn't play the trombone. I was still working there. In the 2014, I couldn't play. 2015, I still couldn't play. You know, Koichiro, I had the picture here, but maybe yeah. I don't. Should I show show it? Yeah, I'm just gonna show it briefly. I don't wanna just. I, I saw this 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 lip um, mm -hmm. after the the scar after the surgery. Like it, it looks uh, like painful, pretty painful. It's okay. It's okay. That's the reality. So I, I don't care. Yeah. And um, and so what 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 happened after that? Like like I guess you know, these kind of problems. 
either mm -hmm. when it comes from a neuro neurological uh dystonia, dystonia dystonia yeah like like dystonia or 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 a physical uh injury like like in yours i think yeah. the problem you know i also had a tough time well, i think nothing compared to 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 that surgery but the problem starts when you 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 start doing adaptations to your way of playing and then at some point you lose the 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 The, the, your, 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 the concepts and, and, the, and the way you play and, and those little adaptations change little by little your habits and at the end your way of playing so exactly. you, you were you, saying 2013 yeah. you're totally right like it's a build up you know bad habits are build up like a snowball effect and you know and I still remember like a 2000 maybe 17 Yeah, I decided, all right, so like I've been trying to get this in the four years, you know, gradually getting better, but my bad habits started kicking stronger, stronger, stronger every day. And at the same time, like I had to play the like, Shostakovich 4 symphony, solo in the symphony, and I had to do the recital, Shostakovich 15, so, you know, Mala 3, oh, Mala 3 was a disaster. It wasn't a disaster, but like, you know, such a nightmare. I couldn't sleep because, you know, I didn't know what to do because you know, I can't use a three different ambushes to, to, to do the one solo. Mm -hmm. And my endurance was terrible, and I had to take like an Advil, which is a painkiller, ibuprofen, every time before I play the concert. So because you know I'm using every single muscle to make it happen. Okay, of course I knew that was bad, but you know in front of you, in front of three thousand people on an orchestra concert, you know, you know, yeah. I'm doing a bad thing to, in order to play trombone, bad habits. I'm not gonna play. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to finish the show. Okay, mm -hmm. so. Caught on that, I just, my schedule was busy, but at the same time, my schedule wasn't busy, but I was doing a bad job every single concert. Yeah, I just look bad. So I lost a lot of opportunities because I still showed up, finished the concert, but the quality wasn't there because, it, yeah, because I wasn't, I wasn't playing a comfortable way. So I think in 2016, I decided to move again. So just a little bit, you lower, you're bigger. So my ambition was very high. You know, all right, this is the warning sign. If you want to put your mouth piece higher than usual, that means they're going to be the first sign that they're gonna, you're having a little problem. So that's why I would suggest <clears throat> rock bass. This is my dear friend, uh, Colin Williams, who had to you know, go through like a consumer very traumatic you know, experience. He couldn't play for several years, me too. So, and he gave me a great tip. So, you know, it's called a blocked buzz. You know, just cover your like, uh, back of the mouse piece like this. Then try to blow. So, like, it's, of course, it's no sound that's coming out. But, in a different, you know, you feel the, the rim engagement, also the placement. So, I feel like I'm using more here in the support, you know, my skin, instead of like, on the rip side. So, I do this every day, you know, uh, so that uh, the one, one of the reasons that I got into trouble, I got a tr uh, the serious injury was because my aperture was too big. I was trying to play like a full volume, like a John Mackey. Of course, I got an injury. I was playing, you know, play as, you know, a large, you know, my aperture was right, you know, wide open. I was playing a model six with that way. And the same morning, the same day, next morning, I was doing a recital. That's a stupid. That's a stupid. Because I injured because I played too loud. I didn't know about, you know, like a logics, mechanics. I just... Yeah, I was a stupid. Like, I was accepting every single gig. At the same time, I was teaching like you know, seven students every week. Of course, I got injured. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just a stupid. And 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 how did you overcome that uh, situation? Like, uh, I just moved a little bit over the summer. You know, I was doing this. You know, the the block bus. May I always checked my. <sighs> I always check the limb, uh, the rim engagement, uh, the you know, mouthpiece engagement of my face. I try to do everything slow, everything, everything, everything slow. Of course, I had to give up playing, uh, I don't know, the, you know, the technical stuff. I don't even touch it because you know, I don't want to injury again. So, and also like uh, use more air and you think about a more vibration also like a warm-up really really warm up you know how you warm up how you approach you know you're really the first note and you talk to your body all the time and also like uh, you have to change a certain diet you know if you like a spicy food and uh, the red wine mm -hmm. you have 
careful because the next morning everything is foggy, right? Everything kind of like uh, numbed. If you have like another you know, like, you know, two bottles you know, on the red wine, finish with uh, like a white wine. No, it's too much. Anyway, so start with <laughs> the beers. No, I'm kidding. It's then like you have like a salty food, and the next morning everything's kind of no feeling, like a numbness. All right. Mm -hmm. Then you go to like a ten o'clock rehearsal, trying to do like a Shostakovich A sort of five. Oh, you're screwed. Yeah, you're starting to use the yes. muscles. That is not good. All right, so I would suggest. Yeah, I would suggest like uh, less red wine. <laughs> Less, less red yeah. wine, uh, more yeah. relaxed uh, practicing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, more gin and tonics. Yeah. No. So and also like uh, the Mick Markehi and the teacher from like uh, the from the uh, great uh, Michael Markehi. He, mm -hmm. you know, I went to his. You know, I went to Chicago. I took his lesson a couple of times. That helped a lot. So he didn't, you know, he was he was very very generous and he was very very helpful to me. Mm -hmm. So basically, I had to relearn whole thing again. I'm still doing it. So uh, I'm kind of recovered. I would say like a seventy percent recovered. But still, when I got nervous, bad habits kicked in, and mm -hmm. you know, PSDT, you know, like it's a traumatized, yes, still yes. comes, you know, come back. I don't want to go back. That's what you know. That's what the darkest time in my life. I really, really wanted to quit playing the music at all. I didn't want to even listen to music. Yeah, think about it this way. You know, I the my my, my worst days. I couldn't do this. Like like this. <laughs> So I had to use three different ambushers in order to play wow. just a two simple, like a regatta thing. And you know, back in the twenties, uh, the two thousand, when I was making CDs and when I was winning an audition and a Seattle audition and the owners of man, I never had a problem. You know, I never got tired. I never got tired. I never got a problem. Mm -hmm. I just play every night. It was, uh, it was, you know, everything. Yeah. No, but, but I, I, I'm sure you're gonna reach that hundred um, percent, or at least 90 percent. Like none of us are playing ever at hundred percent. And I don't know about you, but what I, what I felt uh, listening also to uh, your experience and to other experience, like one of the keys is look forward like don't try to look, look and, and to, to look back and and, and and get exactly the same feelings that were uh, before that injury the idea yeah. is to if, if you were able to do it once you can do it again and and, and you did it already so yeah. Sure. So, I agree with you because you know, like you know, when I was having a really rough time, I couldn't play. I couldn't play the five or six years. Uh, at the same time, like I, was, it's, it was a nightmare. Every single night, I was sweating my, uh, I was sweating so hard in an orchestra because I don't know what's gonna, what's kind of like a note is gonna come out from a bell. It's like a, I couldn't deal with the stress. So, uh, you know, if you have a problem, okay, it's gonna be fine. Let you go. If you think you have a problem, of course, you take time off. You know, that's very, very important because, you know, muscles and tissues, very, it's changes all the time because that's why we look so different like 10 years ago, right? Like a muscle, mm. pro, you know, the structure of your face mm. change all the time. Also, your ambusher is much lazier than you think. So like, you know, mm. you know, it's your ambition forgets. And also like your demand, also responsibilities, you know, getting bigger when you're playing uh, the mm. professional mm. orchestra, you're the under attention. If you're like uh, the athlete, you know, like uh, you feel like, you know, professional football player, there's like uh, 10 people taking care of you. Don't, mm -hmm. don't run anymore. Like, he could get like a massage, hot massage. So we don't have any of those. And yeah, you have to be, yeah, you're more an individual. You have to talk, mm. speak to your body. And also like um, if you're having an uh, issue, uh, just don't deny it. So if you have like a problem, just like a be honest, you know, to yourself. I know I screwed up in many concerts, even though like and I was, I was, I was called, I was asked to play like, you know, the, the best brass ensemble in the history, I screwed up, I couldn't play. So I totally regret, I should have said no, but you know, my ego tells me like, yeah, you know, I want, I used to play the Metropolitan, I'm a principal, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. 
So, but be honest with you. I wasn't honest enough. I said, yeah, I, I, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can do it. Yeah, God told you know tells me like it would be fine. No, be honest with yourself. And if you cannot play you know two octaves on just a basic scale uh, without changing any tone quality, the back and the mm-hmm. forth. If you cannot play you know mala three with just one embouchure, like you know keep like the same uh, the sound. Mm-hmm. Yes, your problem. Take your time off, of course, and you know think about uh, think about what are you doing wrong and analyze your playing the logics. Of course, you know it's not. I'm not talking about like, playing the music, you know, like operating, how to operate this guy, okay? <laughs> so like, you have to have like a separate, you know, like, you know in the operating the instruments and the playing the music, uh, the, you know, has to be different, you know, it has to be like at the side of the mountain, okay? Yes. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm mean, talking a lot. No, 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 I, no, but it, it, you know, <laughs> I, I wanted to say that, thank you for sharing that with uh, all of us. Like, I know it's not easy, we all have uh, these, the, <laughs> dark moments but you know uh at the end uh, life one, yeah one day at a time li- li- the- life is a long run you know and at, at, at the end is what matters so <laughs> before we <laughs> before we we we, we finish this wait you said like end is all matters. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I i know i know i know <laughs> I know that sounds a little bit like death <laughs> no, it's, okay. it's okay that's okay no yeah, no no good. like the, the 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 daily overcome uh, of the situations is the is the is what what, <laughs> what it's important so i would like you all to support uh Koichiro by visiting what he does like visiting um his social media also his uh online academy like we've had had we we've had him for almost three hours this is maybe a new record <laughs> I'm so crazy, so crazy. <laughs> no, was, no, this was amazing. He 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 told us about his experience at Juilliard. He told us about his injuries. He told us about his um, auditions, his childhood, uh, his motivations, his up- upcoming projects. Uh, I would like to end with a couple of uh, things. One of them is you recently moved to Sires. Uh, can you tell us... This, uh, by the way, somebody's asking this specific question. Uh, can you ask him about the specifics of uh, his trombone? Wh- which equipment are you are you playing? Uh, this one's you know like you know look you know based on like a Colin mm-hmm. Williams model. Mm-hmm. So I'm mean, using like uh, they gave me uh, gave me a couple of choices like a lead pipe. I and I I'm a between you know the styling silver and uh, the two. Or mm-hmm. just a gold, you know, gold uh, two lead pipe. I like a gold better because it's open, more mm-hmm. openness, and also like uh, this valve, just a stand, you know, standard uh, rotor valve. I mm-hmm. think and uh, Steve made me this. You know, hard to see because you know uh, the camera because no brace here. Mm-hmm. Uh, with a brace, I have here, but I I like this one better. Again, just again, I don't want an injury again because I don't want to fight with a trombone ever again. Okay. So this, I, this is really, really open trombone. So it's Collins Bell. I think a Collins slide. Um, <sighs> Collins every in my house. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, I'm trying new mouthpiece. It's mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, very, very comfortable. Quite big uh, one. Is is a quite not big. The three, I would say like a three a three rim. And wow. a 5G or 5GS cup, uh, something like that. You I know, think that uh, could be hard for me to to to. I know because you know, I'm too. I'm, I don't know. So no, I'm, no, no, no. But it it sounds. I, I like a 4G rim. You know, 4G rim is the best. But you know, just. But you know, I feel more comfortable with this rim. Oh, but uh, yeah, that's why I can't play high. You know what I mean? Nah, <laughs> that's why you play that. You nailed a, a super high F before. <laughs> Just oh, like, <laughs> like super, super easy, super easy. Oh, and you know, uh, uh, I wanted to, I, I always finish this uh, podcast because, you know, we all have uh, dreams. Of course, you, I'm, I'm sure you fulfilled some of, some of, some of them, or at least for me, it would be a dream, like to be metropolitan, this one of okay. the major orchestras of Seattle, like that's already a, a super big goal. But uh, I usually like to finish a podcast asking, which dreams do you have left? What would you like 
um, what, what do you expect towards I'm future? Old, I'm old man. I'm an old man. Like I don't have like a dream. Like oh, I want to play the Vietnam film. I'm like that's that's kind of joke. But mm -hmm. I do have a dream because you know I want to. Um, of course, I still have you know probably hopefully 15, but I don't know how long I can you know sit in the principal chair and uh, the great orchestra like a Seattle because you know it's just so much demanding. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to keep everybody happy, and uh, I just uh, try to live one day, you know, day by day, you know, one day at a time. And I learned from the like, injury was, you know, I was trying to do everything too much. I was beyond. I try. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be like a Christian Lindbergh. I want to be like a, you know, young boss. Yeah, I want to be like a superstar, which I am not. So, I, which is okay. I'm totally okay. I'm happy because I'm playing in a great orchestra mm -hmm. right now, and everybody gets along each other. I have a, you know, uh, it's the beautiful house to live, mm -hmm. and I have a hobby which is ski. I want to be like a better skier five years from now. No, of that, course, that, that's a, that's a nice that's a nice dream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to, uh, it's the people, I lost one of my best friends, you know, he was a big supporter of mine uh, the three months ago, you know, he had a dying of cancer, and uh, I really, really miss him, and also, you know, I miss, you know, seeing my parents, because in the time of the pandemic, the traveling is extremely challenging, so, but I don't have a dream right now. You know, other than like, I want to be a better skier. I don't want to have another <laughs> job problems, but all of my friends, all of my family members, you know, make sure they're safe and healthy. Uh, it's not like I just, I want to do party. I just want to, you know. <laughs> I think me too. You know, yeah. one of, uh, I, I really miss those uh, mm -hmm. casual things that mm -hmm. happen like every week and that you can do anymore. Like for example, when, it's Friday night after a long week working all day long. And then it's Friday night at 11. You have to be home <laughs> because of this alarm uh, thing. Including you, including you, including all the friends that you know, came visit, you know, just uh, put up with my, you know, kind of uh, nonsense for like, you know, almost like a three hours. I, I really, really, <laughs> oh, this is gonna, my dream is, I don't know. I just, to everybody's you know happiness i think mm -hmm. yeah because you know i had to go through like a really rough time i had to be so mean to some other people because you know i was i i'm not great with dealing with stress yeah just uh yeah be nice to your uh be nice to your friends how about yes. a family no, so that's I, true. I, yeah we'll and, see what yeah. and you know i was gonna say that before we we go whenever you have a problem like you like you have you know mm -hmm. a, a leap uh, mm -hmm. injury or you lose or you lose or you lose somebody that you really love things like that then you start to value uh, things and realize um, how uh, not important are certain things that that you get stress uh, by sometimes so you know i think you 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 taught us a very important lesson today and and this is gonna stay in the internet forever i yes. encourage i encourage you all you know especially those who who know people who have problems and then uh, or they are still suffer suffering maybe from stress or anxiety mm -hmm. or even uh, hesitation these kind of problems i think today's podcast was a great example of how uh, there can be always um you know a, a, a new path in life so uh, oh. Like it, it, it was great, actually. But yeah. by the way, uh, one thing, one little thing, like everybody's like a student until you die. You know what I mean? So like, if we have a problem, you know, playing trombone, it's like, a, you know, we dedicate our lives to playing the music, right? If we cannot play the trombone, if we cannot operate the trombone, it sucks. It sucks. You know, like it just like, you know, it makes you depressed, makes you anger, uh, you know, upset disoriented you don't know what to do but they talk to your friends talk to your teachers okay and uh, you mm -hmm. know there's always somebody for you so you know, mm -hmm. to me i had i was so grateful like i have uh, so many great friends and mm -hmm. teachers mick marke he and like, he helped me a tremendous amount you know hours yeah so talk to anna calling the nathan the guns i can list of names they always pick up my phone call you know just kind of crying on the shoulder but mm -hmm. you know i'm still trying to recover from like a traumatized event but there's always somebody to listen to you right so mm -hmm. 
of and, course. Uh, best of you, Ricardo. Thank you so okay. much for like, giving me uh, your yeah. wonderful trombone music. And I'm mm. looking forward to mm. you know uh, play the, your piece and uh, more ahead. Yeah. You know, me too. Me too. Like like uh, it's kind of a dream. Like people like you uh, are, <laughs> are are willing, even willing to look at my at my music. I have to say something because. Uh, I don't want to just uh, leave it there. Like some people, uh, sometimes they support this uh, podcast by sending questions because sometimes maybe you heard this. Bring. Did you hear that that noise at some point? It's because people was sending some messages of support through little no. donations. The last one, we are at the end of the interview, but... I, to be honest with the with the person who donated to ask you a question was uh, how do you work on high register <laughs> maybe we could end up the the the, the podcast uh, answering to this uh, supporter of this uh, podcast Sandy. yeah just like you know do the great sandy just like you know yes. Let's, let's you know you have to pretend like you're just like you're not doing anything just like, you know okay find the most beautiful you know like a note you can play without using any force so to me it's like a middle f natural i start from there just like you know just let's pretend almost like it just um yeah use that note as a fundamental just go mm -hmm. up grease on you like a <laughs> You know, this, uh, also <laughs> you like could go up forever and forever. <laughs> no, 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 that's the highest. Like, I chipped the note. That's the highest mm -hmm. I want to play and I can play. So don't tie it up here. And also like a singing, 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 singing. Look at like Luciano Pavarotti, the older video, you know, Maria, uh, Maria Carras, and like all the great singers. They are not squeezing yes. their Buck, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I let you go. I'm, I'm, I feel so bad. Like, you know, I'm talking. No problem. No problem. <laughs> That's my chill. Like my. No yeah. problem. I, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much uh, to everybody for being here. Please Thank feel you. free to uh, visit uh, Koi Tiros uh, social media. Contact him in case you want uh, to 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 have him as a teacher uh, to join his online academy. Uh, maybe you can even ask him about uh, his new book. I'm gonna, he's gonna send me a, a link and I will put it in the description. Uh, this the, the cold book, you know, I, I, I looked it up and I'm, you know, I'm gonna start doing that routine. I think it's gonna help me out because I'm composing most of the time and I have no time to practice. So that's gonna be a, a good way to, to. It's a boring. It's a boring. It's a very very simple boring little book about gonna help you know help me to recover from the injury. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna be great. Um, and please, if you wanna support this channel, feel feel free to subscribe. In the following uh, weeks, we're gonna have amazing people. Uh, not as amazing as our friend today, Kohichiro, but because he was the best of all time. <laughs> but we will have Nitsan Haros, which is oh. Kohichiro's uh, friend. Uh, yeah. We'll have also, you know, he's going to be, uh, it's going to be funny because it's the first time I'm going to invite somebody who is not a brass player. I'm going to invite uh, the principal clarinet of Malaysia Philharmonic Orchestra. Uh, we were uh, colleagues in, in orchestra. His name is Gonzalo, but he won a prize in, uh, in Munich uh, ARD competition. He's an amazing player. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be fun to see how uh, life in that part of Asia is and, and learn from, from that culture and, and, and from this guy. So, Goitero. Uh, let's go. I'm gonna go dinner. Uh, you you can go do siesta. Uh, <laughs> but thank you very much to everybody for being here. It's been an authentic pleasure. Thank you very much.